referrals planning meeting 12th of August 2020. The referrals meeting is made up of members from both committees, committees A and B. My name is Cathy Guthrie and I'm the chairman today. May I first of all remind you of some domestic arrangements. Please ensure that microphones are muted when you are not speaking, that you do not interrupt the other speaker, Members are reminded not to use the messaging chat function during the meeting unless it is to report a pecuniary, non-pecuniary interest or to notify the chair that they wish to make a proposal. Members are reminded that they should not have alternative communication lines open, i.e. other Skype chats, and that if you are contacted by a third party during an application, you should bring this to the legal advisor's attention. That if you are attending the meeting, to speak and persistently interrupt the meeting, you may be asked to leave. Additionally, you will be invited to speak and ask questions by the chair of the meeting. Please await your turn. We will not be using the hands up function, except for declarations of interest, site visit requests and declarations of lobbying. If you are experiencing poor connection issues, and that might well be an issue today, in the first instance, please turn off your camera if this does not work, please turn off all incoming video. These options are under the three dots on the main information bar. May I ask everybody who's not speaking now to turn off their video for the moment, please? We are experiencing difficulties with our computers, so if you could turn off your video if you're not speaking. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeated viewing. The whole of the meeting will be recorded except where there are confidential or exempt items. If you make a representation to the meeting, you will be deemed by the Council to have consented to being recorded. By entering this meeting as a speaker, you are also consenting to being recorded by the Council and to the possible use of those sound recordings for webcasting and training purposes. The Council, members of the public and press may record, film, photograph or broadcast this meeting when the public and press are not, are not lawfully excluded. Introductions. Ian Dupre, Legal Advisor. Robert Carmichael, Governance Officer. Philip Isbell, Chief Planning Officer. Vincent Pierce, Case Officer. Stephen Stroud, Strategic Projects and Delivery Manager. And we have the ward members, Keith Wellham and Harry Richardson. Christine Thurlow may also be present later on, and she is the professional lead for key sites on infrastructure. And just before I move to the agenda, can we please just acknowledge the fact that Julie Abbey Taylor, who's Strategic Housing Team's Manager, has been with Mid Suffolk District Council for the last 12 years, and she'll be leaving at the end of this month. And although she couldn't make this meeting, I think it should be recorded that we would like to record our thanks for all her hard work to Mid Suffolk and wish her well in the future. <coughs> Can I move to the agenda, please? Apologies for absence and substitutions. I will now ask the governance officer to roll call. Thank you, Chair. Um, if it's a if it's a V so that we don't have any further connections, I'll just do it by voice. Thank you. So. If you could please respond with present or good afternoon. So we have Councillor James Carston. Present. Councillor Rachel Eburn. Present. Councillor John Field. Present. Councillor Peter Gould. Present. Councillor Cathy Guthrie. Present. Councillor Lavinia Haddingham. Present. Councillor Matthew Hicks. Present. Councillor Barry Humphreys. Present. Councillor Sarah Mansell. Present. Councillor John Matheson. Present. Councillor Andrew Mellon. Present. Councillor Richard Mayer. Present. Councillor Dave Muller. Present. Councillor Mike Norris. Present. Councillor Andrew Stringer. Present. Councillor Andrew War sorry, Councillor Roland Warboys. Present. And Councillor Wellham. Present. And Councillor Richardson as well. Uh, present. Brilliant. Thank you, Chair. We are all present. Thank you. To receive declarations of pecuniary and non-pecuniary interest by members. Are there any? And if you use the hands up function in this, I can see if there is anybody. Councillor Mayer. Um, not sure it's relevant, but my daughter has her wedding and reception booked at Columbine Hall, which is linked to um, agenda item 8A. Thank you for that. And yeah, then... just, just come in, Madam Chair. I don't that that's 
can be properly declared as a non-pecuniary interest. It's not. It doesn't affect the council's ability to continue, but it's it, it's been declared. Thank you. Thank you. And there was one other person, Mike Norris. Oh, uh, yes. Going. Item eight B. Thank you. And what was it? Pecuniary or non-pecuniary, please. I was a non uh No, sorry, I've got the wrong item on the agenda. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Don't no. worry, it's the heat. Don't worry. Uh, sorry, I thought we were on lobbying. Okay, I'm just no. having issues. My system is coming and going, actually, at the moment. I, I think we will all afternoon. Can you take your hand down now so that we can see who else is there? Anyone else for pecuniary or non-pecuniary? Right, okay, we move on. And declarations of lobbying, and yes, I think there's going to be quite a few others. <laughs> um, I think I'll put my hand into the bar as well. So I think that is all of us, and I think that would be right to say that it would be the first and um, application I've received an email of lobbying. Would all that right. be correct? If there's anything different. Can you um, make that known to me, please? Several emails of lobbying. Right, but for the for the Thetford. Yeah, for the Thurston. Thurston. Yes. Thurston. Sorry, I told you. Thurston. Mm -hmm. Thurston. Yeah. Um, Robert, do you want to go through everybody and ask them specifically because there's so many hands going up? Shall we ask them individually? Can you go through them, please? Yes, Chair, yeah, I'll just go through then. So just And then if everybody put their hands down and we'll come through to you all. Sorry about that. So, Councillor Carsten. Oh, thank you. Yes, um, first an application for an email. Thank you. Councillor Eburn. The, the same. Thank you. 8B on the thank agenda. You. Councillor Field. Yes, 8B, several emails. Councillor Gould. Yeah, 8B, uh, several emails. Thank you. Councillor Guthrie. Yes, 8B. I've only had one email, actually. They don't like me. Councillor Haddingham. Um, 8B, yeah. Thurston, two emails. Councillor Hicks. 8B. Councillor Humphreys. 8B. Councillor Mansell. 8B. Councillor Matheson. Yes, also 8B, yes. Thank you. Councillor Mellon? Yes, 8B, several emails. Councillor Mayer? 8B, just the one. Councillor Muller? 8B, several emails. Councillor Norris? 8B, also several emails. Councillor Stringer? Uh, 8B, several emails. And Councillor Warboys? Can you all take your hands down now, please? We've gone through that. Thank you. Oh, Councillor sorry, Stringer. sorry, we didn't hear from Councillor Warboys there, Chair. I... Did we not? I thought we did. Did we? I, I thought I didn't hear anything. I'll just... Oh, I'll um... mute again. Sorry, I was a bit quick muting. Um, yeah, 8P. Thank you. Yeah, Councillor Stringer, can you take your hand down, please? Thank you. Right. So that's lobbying. Declarations of personal site visits. And if there's a multitude, then I think we'll go through them again. But so I've just got Councillor Mansell. Uh, yes, I uh, I happened to be adjacent to the site for 8B uh, earlier this week. Uh, I've also I think I better declare that I have visited the site in Stow Upland a few months ago. I was uh, exploring the footpaths and doing a bit of mapping uh, for an orienteering event uh, in uh, around the location of the Stow Upland site. So I better declare that as a site visit. <laughs> That's very good of you. Thank you very much. Councillor Matheson. Councillor Matheson? Uh, no. Microphone on. Yes, I, I have, was um, looking at the site uh, last Saturday in Thurston. Yes. Thank you. And who is the one other is? Councillor Mallon, please. Uh, yes, same. Visited the site in Thurston. Thank you. Thank Chair. you. Can you take your hands down, please? 
Confirmation of the minutes of the meeting held on the 29th of January. Are there any points regarding accuracy to the minutes, please? And accuracy only, thank you. There don't appear to be any. So can I have a proposer and a seconder that I can accept the minutes of the meeting, please? Councillor Mansell's proposing and Councillor Haddingham seconding. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for your help there. Um, would you take a roll call, please, um, Robert? Thank you, Chair. So if members could please respond with four against or abstain. So, Councillor James Carston? Four. Councillor Rachel Eburn? Four. Councillor John Field? Four. Councillor Peter Gould? Four. Councillor Cathy Guthrie? Four. Councillor Lavinia Haddingham? Four. Councillor Matthew Hicks? Four. Councillor Barry Humphreys? Four. Councillor Sarah Mansell? Four. Councillor John Matheson? Four. Councillor Andrew Mellon? Four. Councillor Richard Mayer? Abstain. Councillor Dave Muller? Four. Councillor Mike Norris? Four. Councillor Andrew Stringer? Four. And Councillor Warboys? Four. Thank you, Chair. That is carried. Thank you. The minutes of the meeting have been confirmed and I will sign at the next practicable opportunity. So we also have the minutes of the meeting held on the 21st of February 2020. And again, are there any points regarding accuracy of the minutes? And can I have a proposer and a seconder, please? Councillor Muller and Councillor Haddingham. Yeah, happy to propose. Thank you. And again, Rob, um, Robert, if you can just run through the members please thank you chair so if you could please respond with four against or abstain as previously so councillor carston four <laughs> councillor sorry councillor rachel eburn four councillor john field four councillor peter gould four councillor kathy guthrie four councillor vinya haddingham four councillor matthew hicks four Councillor Barry Humphreys? Four. Councillor Sarah Mansell? Abstain. Councillor John Matheson? Four. Councillor Andrew Mellon? Abstain. Councillor Richard Mayer? Abstain. Councillor Dave Muller? Four. Councillor Mike Norris? Abstain. Councillor Andrew Stringer? Four. And Councillor Roland Warboys? Four. Thank you, Chair. That is carried. And again, the minutes have been confirmed and will be signed at the next practicable opportunity. To receive notification of petitions in accordance with the Council's petition scheme? None received, Chair. And the schedule of planning applications will be as we have them in the papers, which is we will start with the Stowe Upland and move on to the first and one second. Uh, so I would now ask Case Officer Vincent Pierce uh, to introduce the application of DC 201435, Land to the South of Gipping Road, Stowe Upland, Stowe Market. So if you would like to present your case, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, members and anyone who might be listening. I've just got to share my screen, so hopefully that won't take a second. While you're doing that, for the benefit yeah. of the public, um, when um, the officers have made their presentation, uh, members are able to ask questions. Um, they are succinct questions for clarity, I'm sure. Um, and when anybody else is speaking, they will have three minutes. And the same thing applies there. If there's uh, a question for clarity, we will ask the uh, members to ask those questions. I was just filling in for you, Vince. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm just going to ask whether you can actually see anything? Yeah. Can you see one image or can you see several images down the left hand side? Well, I can see one image and then several down the left hand side. Okay. 
Let's see if we can. Everyone else. There we go. Has that now become one image? Correct. Excellent. Well, I can start. Thank you, everyone. This is a new application. It involves land to the south of Gipping Road in Stow Upland. It is an outline application and it is for up to 80 dwellings. There are a rich number of issues that we need to look at. They are explored in detail in the report, but amongst the key planning issues, I would suggest we need to look carefully at connectivity, landscape impact, status of the current plan, the Stow Upland neighbourhood development plan, our five-year housing land supply, traffic, sustainability, residential immunity, and then at the end, I will ask members to weigh up benefits and impacts in terms of a planning balance. I do need to say that this presentation is uh, here to supplement the detail in the report and all the representations that you may hear later during discussion. I'd just like to point out that Stowe Upland Parish Council did provide an updated um, comment that wasn't in your report on the 13th of July and they are maintaining their objection to the proposal and they're making a particular point about the nature of the controlled crossing in Church Road and I'll go into that in a bit more detail when we come to that section of the presentation but I've set their comments up in full on the screen at the moment. So first thing is Stow Upland is a key service centre and as you all know a key service centre is one of those locations where you would expect the majority of new development including residential to be located along with towns within the district. I've shown the application site in red on the screen and we'll just put that into context in a moment. That is a illustrative master plan. Uh, you won't see any housing layout on that. That is because it's a, an outline application. I do need to refer to the previous scheme that members looked at in January and refused. That was a different scheme. As I say, this is a new application, but I will at times reflect back onto the January uh, application and the decision because there are areas that both have in common. The big difference here is that the application now, rather than being for 70 dwellings or up to 70, it's now up to 80 dwellings and there have been a number of layout changes and I will describe those in detail as we go. There is a copy of the previous refusal that is in the uh, report. Again, just to prove that the previous reasons for refusal, as members had asked, were actually the ones that were issued. So I'm sure the question that springs to mind on all members' uh, tongues is, so what are the differences between this scheme and the one that you looked at back in January? First thing is, there have been layout changes to increase the depth of landscaping, particularly along Gipping Road. That was an area that members had a lot of concern over. And also the northern edge of Threadstones Meadow. We now have an inclusion of a controlled crossing on Church Road that wasn't previously included in the scheme. We have uh, a £50,000 financial contribution towards improvements to the A1120 and the B1115 junction and or cycle route improvements in Stow Upland. We've also now secured footway improvements on Church, Church Road. So in terms of the context, what you have on the screen at the moment identified as Trinity Meadows is the Bloor homes development that's currently under construction and that adjoins the application site. So in black you'll see Threadstones Meadow in the foreground and the site on the right hand side. Disappearing into the distance you have Stowe Upland which merges into Stowe Market in the far distance. So the point I'm making here is that the application site is already adjoined by new development. There is Threadstones Meadow of which more later. That's a shot of Bloor Homes just to give you a flavour of 
the development or the character of development that you have already approved. We do need to go through a quick resume of policy because this is a new application. Stow Upland does have an adopted neighbourhood plan and that dates from 2019. The application site is shown with a yellow star. I don't know whether my cursor shows in this location here. So that's the Bloor home site that's under construction and that's the application site. If we take a look at the Stow Upland Neighbourhood Development Plan in terms of allocations, when you add up the sites and existing permissions that are referred to in that document, we get a figure of 349 dwellings. So the plan does make provision for that number of, of units. And there is that list that gives us the, the number. I referred to 349 in the previous slide because we have added on the extra 19 that were uh, agreed as an uplift to the Bloor development. You'll see here that the actual Stow Upland neighbourhood plan says 331. I also draw your attention to the note at the bottom of that table within the neighbourhood plan that says it will be reviewed on an annual basis. Again, another slide. So as you can see from the screen, within the neighbourhood plan, the site sits outside of the settlement boundary. So the red line is the settlement boundary. The area in green is Threadstones Meadow and in the plan that is identified as a local green space. And I just refer you here to the green gap, which is another designation in the neighbourhood plan south of Church Road. And again, this is the Bloor site, which is included within the settlement boundary. Just a, that's the application site, which does include Threadstones Meadow. Stow Upland, I've just uh, plotted some of the key facilities within the, the village, and I think that probably is in the background papers as, as well. I now turn to the Baber Mid Suffolk Joint Local Plan, and on this screen you'll see in blue that's the Bloor site. The application site within the JLP is actually allocated for residential development and is within the settlement boundary. Now I have to say that the joint local plan at the moment has uh, limited weight but it is an expression of direction of travel of the council in terms of accommodating the significant uh, growth that we have to uh, secure in the period up to 2036. So this site is known in the JLP as LA079 is actually allocated for 100 dwellings. So when we look at the allocations against the joint local plan, the identified requirement set by the council in its draft joint local plan is 752 dwellings. So between the 752 and the figure I mentioned earlier within the neighbourhood plan, the 349 figure, there is a deficit. And there I've just uh, explained the nature of that deficit on or around 200, sorry, 421 dwellings or 402 after you've deducted the 19 from Bloor. And the, the table on the right, again from the GLP, just shows you how many communities are being asked to accommodate substantial numbers of new dwellings. So Elmswell at 834, I at 541, Stow Upland at 752, Thurston 1468 and Woolpit 727. Again, just to remind everyone that the starting point for discussion is our development plan, our adopted development plan. In terms of constraints, what we have, sorry, I'll go back to that. We have a a listed building up here, which is Columbine Hall, and there's a scattering of listed buildings down here on Church Road, obviously the site sitting in here, but you'll notice the site 
sits right at the hub of a, a complex network of public footpaths and they run through Threadstone's meadow. And here we have the edge of the settlement boundary within the existing adopted local plan. In terms of the site and particularly Threadstone's meadow, which you can see in this image, so you can actually see the paths that are, are cutting across and there's obviously, I assume that's dog walkers, a circular route around Threadstone's meadow, but it's worth saying that it isn't in an area of outstanding natural beauty. It isn't a triple SI, site of special scientific interest. It isn't a local nature reserve. It isn't in a special landscape area. There are no protected trees on the site and so on. Although, as I say, it is identified in the neighbourhood plan as a local green space. Just to show you how complex the network of foot, public footpaths are in and around Stowe Upland, I've never seen as many as that in any other settlement, so it's quite remarkable. In terms of access, whilst access would be a reserve matter, what is being proposed on the illustrative layout is for the vehicle access to come in from the adjacent Blur Homes development. The green triangle at the top is the access for emergency vehicles. That would not, as shown on this plan, be the main access to the development. And obviously this estate already has a purpose built access onto Church Road. That shows in a bit more detail, so you'd come in off Church Road through the estate the, under construction and into the development site. Just to give you a better idea of how they connect. So here's a shot from Gipping Road looking south towards Church Road and you can start to see how that footpath network takes you in all directions from Threadstone's Meadow. One of the key footpaths runs adjacent to the Bloor Homes Trinity Meadows development. So here's a quick trot along that route. You'll see the development on the right. Application site will come into view shortly. So there we are at the gap in the hedge. We're entering into Threadstone's Meadow. There's a pond already in there. That would be safeguarded just so you get a feel, hopefully. Let's just make sure, a quick shot round. This is the site that would actually uh, be gifted for a pound were members to approve the development. And this is, this is the bit in the um, neighbourhood plan that is identified as a local green space. And again, this is, from the application site, moving from Threadstone's Meadow across the hedge, and now we're looking into the development site, and you'll see Trinity Meadows development to your left. We're now looking towards Gipping Road, and just on the right is the hedgerow, beyond which would be remain farmland. And then that takes us out onto Gipping Road. That's looking back towards Thurston from Gipping Road. So in terms of- Not Thurston. <laughs> I apologize, Stow Upland. In terms of connectivity, here we have the site in, in green. This is what I, this is the built up parts of Stow Upland. Right in the center of that is the high school. And you'll notice, broadly speaking, as the crow flies, the site is approximately 600 metres from the centre of that target, as is much of the existing built up parts of Stow Upland. But clearly that is just as the crow, crow flies. We will come back and look at some more detail. This is from the school, the high school's website, and you can see that they are actively advocating uh, students to arrive from a number of different locations. So the school itself can is permeable from the west, the north, the east 
I guess you'd say that was the, the southwest. And I'll show how this development links into some or all of those. So in terms of connectivity, if you were to walk from the, the centre of the development site using the estate road on Trinity Measure uh, Meadows and pop out onto Church Road, you'd be approximately three quarters of a mile from the, the high school. However, if you were to cut across the new adjacent development, and along the public footpath, you'd be significantly less. But at the moment, I can't actually quite see what that is because I've got a picture of you, Chair, right as that. Uh, but I don't know whether you can actually see that. But that's significantly less. That is easy walking distance. And again, if you wanted to walk to the co-op, it's about a mile from the heart of the development site. But of course, if you cut through Threadstone's Meadow through here, you would reduce the journey time. Again, a lot of connectivity in all directions. Feature of the latest proposal is a controlled crossing on the A1120 in opposite or near to the co-op. So this is the co-op and the service station in here. In this location would be, inst would be installed a controlled crossing. Now, I think in the report I've referred to it as a, a toucan and what my colleagues in highways have advised me is that the type would be appropriate for that location. So if cycle facilities can be improved to that point, it could be a, to a toucan. If they can't, then it would be one of the others. It might be a puffin, which is um, geared towards pedestrian activity, but it would be a controlled crossing. And I think I do need to draw that point out because quite rightly, I think Councillor Willem has pointed out that a token would only be applicable where you could cycle using cycle lanes to get to that point. But the big difference is between this and the one in January, and a number of members said, well, how do people get from this development to the co-op safely? This is the way that you would get to the co-op safely because it would involve stopping traffic and allowing at least pedestrians to cross. And a number of members reported last time that during lunch breaks and at the end of school, a lot of pupils from the high school actually gravitate towards the co-op to um, presumably to get sweets or snacks or, or whatever. Another shot. So here is the co-op, the A120. This is um, Thorny Green. The pavement at that point is just over three metres wide, but there are pinch points in here and there is a verge. And yes, you can just about see this path that swings right the way down here past the 1120 B 1115 junction. That's potentially where some of the £50,000 could be spent improving cycle connectivity. Just to illustrate the difference between a puffin and a toucan. <laughs> Also, that money could be used to improve this junction, as I say, and how that could be achieved would be by widening the carriageway on the east side here, taking away some of the existing verge enough to allow you to create a, a widened lane so that you get a protected right turn. And that is something that has been advocated locally to try and get that resolved. And what uh, Gladman have said is they, they would fund that work up to the 50,000 uh, limit set by Suffolk County Council as being what is required to achieve that improvement. So again, that wasn't in the uh, proposal back in January. Also included, you remember I, I referred to footway improvements on uh, Church Road. In this shot, you'll see the, the village hall and you'll notice this bit of verge in here. What's being proposed is that any bits of verge like that within the highway would actually be given a hard surface treatment. And again, that effectively 
increases the width of the, the existing footway and makes it more navigable uh, for users of the path. And again, that deals with a number of pinch points that were pointed out to us at, at the last meeting in, in January. And again, that will be funded by Gladman's were permission to be granted. Also, a point that came up last time in January was it was uh, suggested that you cannot you get to the co-op using a complete continuous footpath. That may well have been true in January or at the end of last year, but since Trinity Me Meadows has really taken off, there have been fantastic new footways put in at the northern end. So you can actually now go from beyond Trinity Meadows all the way down into the heart of Stowe Upland on a continuous footpath. So again, in terms of connectivity, that issue has been resolved simply through the actions of Trinity Meadows being implemented. This diagram shows the various routes that people can take to get around the village. It is a permeable village. Some of those are public footpaths, so obviously they're, they're, some of them are adjacent to trees, some of them are adjacent to hedgerows, but there is an extensive network. And of course, with the improvements to Church Road, you now have a well-drained, hard surface corridor to get from the application site into the heart of the village. So there's one route to the school where you can actually go along Church Road and down to the co-op. Now, Threadstones Meadow, I think you'll recall from last time that the parish council are opposed to the development. They don't want any more residential development. However, securing Threadstones Meadow into public ownership is acknowledged as a benefit. Now, what I need to point out here is that last time there was a committee in, on this slide, there was quite a bit of concern expressed about how close the edge of this development along here was to this northern boundary of Threadstones Meadow. And it was felt that that encroachment of urban form would actually be a threat to the character of Threadstones Meadow. So what we have done is we've negotiated a reduced footprint for the development site and a deeper buffer. So just where that green area has come up, you can actually see that that lime green color represents the additional open space that is now included that wasn't available in, in January. So we have listened and so have the applicants to members concerned in that respect. In terms of buffer depths, we have got on the eastern margin at least a 20 metre buffer. You may recall, Chair and members, there was a, an expression of concern about the depth of this buffer on the northern edge, because as you rightly recall, Columbine Hall, the listed building was, was over here. This has now been increased to 30 metres. That has been sufficient to um, encourage our heritage officer to change the professional view expressed in January to now to uh, very low, less than substantial harm on the heritage asset that is Columbine Hall. And again, now at the south, you've you've got a, a 54 meter deep buffer before you get to the northern edge of Threadstones Meadow. That's 177 feet. Just to explain the difference on Gipping Road, the shot at the top is the current proposal and the one at the bottom is the one that you saw in January. So effectively, there has been an increase in the buffer as shown in lime green here. That was the scheme that you looked at in January, and you'll notice this edge of the development and its proximity to this boundary. So here we have Threadstones Meadow. With the increase in open space and planting, what has actually happened is effectively you get that. 
So this could be heavily planted. That's a matter for for later discussion at Reserve Matters. But that is a significant setback when you think how close this development is to the boundary that used to exist. And again, up on Gipping Road, up here, effectively what's happened is that boundary has increased too. So in that sort of illustrative form, we can demonstrate a significant enhancement to landscape buffering. In terms of impacts on views and landscape, a critical area to um, consider. Again, not an AOMB, not a special landscape area. It isn't identified as a key view in the Stow Upland neighbourhood plan, and I've set that out in the report, and it isn't in the green gap identified in the Stow Upland neighbourhood plan. However, Threadstones Meadow is a local green space, and that wouldn't be touched by development were this to be approved. So the site is identified within the Suffolk landscape character assessment as ancient plateau claylands. And what I've tried to do here is show you the extent of that character of landscape. So here we've got the whole of Stowe Market, Stowe Upland in here. So everything I've shown in brown is ancient plateau claylands. And the reason for that is that you obviously have a series of rivers and uh, streams that feed the river running up. So effectively what you have is a valley, that yellow bit represents a valley. So the slopes, the valleys slope up and then gradually flatten off. And that is just dictated by the pattern of rivers and streams in the, the area. So as you go through, you end up with the valley meadow lands adjacent to the river. You start gently moving up the slope of the valley. You get to the ancient plateau claylands. And in the very top of that plateau, the fact that it's claylands is because the soil is largely clay. A quick shot of trying to put that all into context. Obviously, here we have Stowe Market, and we're going to hopefully fly towards Stowe Upland. We're just coming up to junction 50 and crossing the A14, and we swing round. We move towards Stowe Upland, and there we have the site hoves into view. That's the Trinity Meadows development, and there is the application site. And what you have around all of that is effectively farmland with the occasional house and dotted settlement. Another flight will move from Walnut Tree Farm, which is a large complex of buildings to the uh, northeast of the site. You've got Gipping Road in just into view on the right. That field would not be developed. You move into the application site with Threadstones Meadow on your left, Trinity Meadows under construction, and then as we zoom out, you'll see urban Stow Upland, the high school, Thorny Green, more urban Stow Upland, which gradually just morphs into Stow Market. I just want to explore this, uh, the nature of views within the neighbourhood plan, because this shows it quite clearly. The blue squares identify important key views and the direction of this sort of fan-shaped arrangement is telling you the direction of that key view. So here's the application site. So that view is looking away to the north, that view is looking away to the north, that view is looking away to the east. What you do get, and, is, and it's acknowledged in the neighbour plans, are views of built-up Stowe Upland which makes sense, particularly when you think that this site will soon be fully developed for housing, and that's the Bloor Homes Trinity Meadows. So technically, it isn't identified as a key view in Stowe Upland's own neighbourhood plan.
Neither is it included in the important green gap to Saxon Street, which sits on the south side of Church Road. So the area just to the north, which would include the application site, has not been identified as green gap. That opportunity was not taken in the neighbourhood plan. Other green gaps have been identified in the neighbourhood plan, as shown in the, uh, the, the green arrows. Place Services, in a comment on the 7th of August, commented on uh, a number of elements of the, the scheme. And what they have said and confirmed is that they have no objection, provided that the mitigation measures identified are implemented. They acknowledge that the increase to the buffer to the north of Threadstones Meadow and on Gipping Road have made an important difference. So in terms of the landscape, obviously we are going to be looking and they are looking to have a traditional indigenous species hedge, trees and hedge woodland. So let's take for example an English oak, which uh, the Woodland Trust identifies the, the ruling majesty of the, the woods and we would certainly expect to see oak included in the planting regime here because there are a number of fine oaks in the area. An oak takes about a year to grow half a metre. So oaks planted on this site after 10 years would be six metres high and after 15 years would be eight metres high. That's if they're planted as whips. But what we have here is a, a picture from Barcham's, the nursery and other nurseries are available. But you'll notice that you can buy these oaks semi-mature, so they're already five metres high. What we've done on other sites is we've inter interspersed whip planting with semi-mature planting so that you get instant impact. But over a longer period, the whips catch up and become a much thicker uh, screen. And I have to say, it is quite clear, and we fully acknowledge that in year one of this development and times of planting, it would be far more visible than in year 15. So we're not trying to conceal the, the, the truth about it will make an impact on the landscape. However, the enhanced landscaping will by year 15 have a much softer impact and it will blend into the into the distance because the trees will then be in the foreground. So there is this initial period whilst the planting gets established. But don't forget we've already got the established hedgerow around Threadstones Meadow so it won't be as stark as perhaps I'm I'm alluding to. As an example, I know of this site in Elmstead Market in, in Essex. This area up here was field. And between 2008 and I've actually got 2102, but that should be 2020. Sorry, that's, that's 2008 to 2012. They've become transposed. Trees were planted as whips in this area. That is a shot, very recent shot. So within seven to or so, a bit more, certainly 12 years, that is how dense that planting has become. And that's the sort of thing I have in my own mind that we'd have that sort of blanket planting to really create that deep landscape buffer. And as I say, that's a mixture of whips and um, larger trees. Heritage impacts, I have gone into, into those in some detail. And I just redraw your attention to the heritage officers, very low than less substantial harm. The increased buffer on Gipping Road has made a significant difference. There we have Columbine Hall, a very fine moated uh, house, grade two star. So we need to be very careful. We need to be sure that it won't have an impact, adverse impact on that setting. And if we do think it has an impact, we then have to, under paragraph 196 of the MPPF, weigh the public benefits against that harm. So here is Columbine Hall. Here is the Bloor Homes development. In this area, we have recently approved individual houses. 
here's the application site, here's an existing uh, buffer of trees, and over here we have existing bungalows, and of course that's the walnut tree farm. So our, our argument here is that with this recent development, with these existing trees and now the deeper buffer, the impact of this on the setting of Columbine Hall will be less than you've already approved for the Bloor Homes development. And that seems to be the opinion too of our heritage colleagues. We've discussed in some detail, there's some of the um, housing that's been approved. Here's a sh elevation of one of the units that's been approved. That is quite a significant structure and that's north of Gipping Road. There's the Nutshells Tea Room. I just want to quickly look at cumulative impacts because clearly there will be some. Obviously there'll be an increase, if it were approved of course, there would be additional construction traffic in and around the, the village that would have to be accepted. Obviously the routes to get there would be the subject of a construction method statement and the activity would be temporary only during the lifetime of that construction. Yes, there will be increased traffic associated with the new homes, but we believe that we now have sufficient mitigation, particularly with the crossing and the co-op to deal with that. And you'll notice that the highway authority have no objection to the increase in, in traffic. There will be pressure, additional pressure on local facilities. And again, that's a good thing in some ways to facilities within the local service center, but we've also uh, got SIL that would be available to offset some of those. And you'll notice in the 10, section 106 there's reference to education contributions and other things. So already mitigation is being built in. There will be harm to the character of the countryside and there will be loss of farmland, but we believe with the enhanced landscape package now within the scheme, that would be suitably mitigated. And we now believe that the harm, the additional harm of new development on this site has been adequately mitigated in terms of the impact on the listed building. Sustainability, again, I just want to dwell on this point. The neighborhood plan actually identifies um, looking after Threadstone's Meadow into the future as a key action that would come out of the neighbourhood plan. And by bringing that into public ownership, I would argue it can be properly maintained. It can have a, a management plan that, that deals with when are the hedges cut? Do you cut the grass for hay? How do you manage it? What species do you put in it? Is it available for events? That would be up to, in the first case, the council. The intention would be if the parish council wanted to pass that on to the parish with a maintenance dowry of £75,000. But the benefit is at the moment, the farmer can do what he or she likes with that piece of land as, as agricultural land. It, is, it has no particular protection, at least with it being in public ownership, that would be safeguarded in perpetuity. So in terms of overall sustainability, we've, we've got the transfer of Threadstone's Meadow. It comes with a maintenance sum, as I say, of £75,000. It represents three hectares of green infrastructure with everything in, included, including the piece to the north. It creates new wildlife corridors. There's an attenuation pond, which creates a new wetland habitat. It, the development will be uh, will come with bat boxes, bird boxes, the range of eco measures that we are encouraging more and more. We will retain the trees and hedgerows that exist. I would argue here we've got a chance to really increase the biodiversity on the site. And we have an opportunity to develop a landscape management plan for this wider, wider area. In terms of bus stops, Stowe Upland is, is quite well served by, by bus stops. A lot of the routes are actually there to get students to and from the school. But when we look at bus services available and the stops, interesting level of service. The key service is the 387, three, Gislingham to Stowe Market, Stowe Market back again. That, that blue map shows the, the routes and there are 
as you can see, frequent services, certainly a lot better than most villages that, that serve Stowe Upland. In terms of the proximity of Stowe Up, sorry, Stowe Market, I think we have to accept that already a lot of people in Stowe Upland will do their big weekly shop in either um, Asda or Tesco in Stow Market. And because Stow Market is so close, I think we would argue that in terms of sustainability, that's not a bad thing because if you're going to those shops, it's what, two miles tops less in your car. While you're there, you will visit you know, probably other services and facilities in Stow Market. So in that sense, proximity is not a bad thing in terms of, yes, people will use their car, but it will be for a very, very short journey. And of course, they do have the co-op within the village itself. Stow Upland, very close to three mainline stations. So again, that helps give it a higher sustainability score. I've just quoted some uh, recent appeal statements where inspectors are not entirely impressed by low levels of bus frequency. And we can come on to that if we we need to. I think uh, more and more inspectors are beginning to come to the view that with so much technology on display and that you can click and collect or you can have things delivered, that actually being able to have a regular bus service is not as important as perhaps it might have been. Now, we may dispute that, but that is the, that's the trend coming out of appeal decisions. In terms of sustainable travel, we will secure electric vehicle charging points to all properties. We will secure a public charging point within the development. And you'll recall we're doing this more and more on the larger sites. We will enhance the um, footpaths in the way that I've described. We will secure an increase in open space. We will, when I say we, of course, that isn't we as the council, that's we as the planning authority will make sure that a developer does all of this were planning permission to be granted. Cycle path connectivity, the controlled crossing, all the other bits and pieces I've listed there would be achieved either by the 106 or by condition through the reserve matters. Cycling, I do need to point out that in June 2020 of this year, the County Council identified 148 priority routes for cycling. One of the few in mid Suffolk, Stowe Upland, identified the Thorny Green to the school as a, a key priority route. We believe that by delivering a controlled crossing were permission to be granted, we would already be pump priming that whole initiative in Stowe Upland. All the properties would be up to NDSS standard, and we would secure the 10% of renewables that's required by policy, or better if we can. In terms of the community, there's obviously the 35% affordable housing that would be secured. We get the extra open space and play facilities. We get the connectivity enhancements, the meadow, significant 106 and SIL contributions. It is still liable. I've identified the harms. I've identified the public benefits, and this is from the report, which leads us to the recommendation as set out in the report, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. That was a very comprehensive run through there. Um, I just wonder before we um, go to the questions, or we'll wait to see what the questions bring up where we can come in on, on further information. So um, I will go to questions from members and I will also ask um, Councillor Wellam and Councillor Eburn if they have questions. So these are questions for clarity only, please. They're not to sort of invite a debate on it. Um, so um, if we go through quickly um, to each person in turn, if you have any questions of the officer, Councillor Caston. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Um, I wonder if on a um, on one of the larger maps we could um, point out the control crossing location, the lane widening, and the um, footpath um, 
Yes. Just just to be absolutely clear where they are in relation to the site. Okay. Yes. So we need to go a bit oh, further up. That's better. So application site here. Church Road. And at that point that, sorry, let me take it further out. I apologize, councillor, that's cuts us a bit short. We need okay. Have we got one with the scale we need? Yes. There. That one. So there's there is the application site. This is the B15, sorry, 1115. This is the A1120 Church Road that swings right up through here. Here is the co-op and here is the school. So what we will be able to achieve is a route through here and through either to the co-op or for people living here, if we can improve this, they would then get a way of coming from here across over to the co-op and obviously this also has good connectivity to the school either through here through here or through there so site school co-op junction thank you for that is that all right then councillor caston well i just um wondered with the um where the um the control crossing yeah. is on there let me see. Yeah, there was a detail, a more detailed yes. uh, scale. I think that's mm. what you're probably looking for. Well, oh, no, I'm chancing my luck. I think you had a different there. slide. I did. Yeah. yeah. Let's go crossing. Slide there. 47, perhaps. There, there we go. So that's the co-op. There's the suggested location for the crossing. So the okay. junction. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I know where that is now. Yeah. Uh, there's the co-op in the picture in the corner there. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Councillor okay, Field. Thank you. thank you for that, Councillor Caston. Councillor Field, any questions for oh, clarity? Why not? Sorry. Yeah. Can Can I just go through everybody, please? Did you miss someone out? Sorry, right. so alphabetically, I was next chair. No, 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 was. no. I'm sorry. You're. I, can I just go through the order I'm going? And you're the ward member, aren't you? No. No. Can yes, I, yes. <laughs> but I am. But I am I will on the come committee to the as well. Ward members at the end, if I may, please. Sorry, okay. but I'm on the committee as well. That's why I was just. Well, uh, not sorry. this because you'll okay. be ward member, won't you? No problem. Thank no. you. Okay. Councillor Field. Okay, um, just just uh, looking at page forty one of the report, it talks about the um, uh, the adverse effect of allowing development that conflicts with the neighbourhood plan is likely to be significant. And further on, it talks about the Stow Upland neighbourhood plan is part of the statutory development plan, but it may not be robust as it as the district council has identified need in the emerging joint local plan uh, has not been met. I, I, I just wonder if you could make that a bit clearer. Clearly the neighbourhood plan is made and is part of the statutory development plan. The district council's plan is still wending its way slowly to conclusion. So how should I really regard that uh, that clash? This is not an allocated site in the stone market plan. Uh, as I've uh, pointed out in the report, yes, the neighbourhood plan is adopted. It does form part of our development plan, but it is clear in terms of the direction of the council. The council is expecting Stow Upland to take a significantly larger number of dwellings than is currently identified in the neighbourhood plan. Can I just interrupt? Because I think that's more for debate. That's just a point that you've made, really, uh, Councillor Field. And I think um, the planning officer has sort of addressed that. But I agree with your questioning. I think that's more for a debate. 
Okay, I, I thought it was a matter of clarification of the uh, of the various. Well, it's an interpretation, isn't it? I would have thought. I mean, I agree with you from, you know, that you've got a made plan and then that's up to us to make a judgment that the officer has mentioned um, a joint local plan, which clearly isn't made. And that's up to us to make a judgment on how we how we view it, I would have thought. Do you have any further questions? No, I'll leave it at that. OK, and then bring that up in the debate. That would be helpful. Councillor Gould. Thank you, Madam Chair, and you may very quickly uh, refer me to your previous answer because my <laughs> my question is uh, not unrelated to to Councillor Fields, uh, and I just and indeed it might be appropriate for someone else, as someone speaking about the uh, the neighbourhood plan itself. But uh, I'm I wanted to ask how the authors of the neighbourhood plan came to assess the quantum of housing. Uh, required and which feature in the, in, in, in the plan. I wonder if that's a question for um, uh, for Councillor Wellham and that when he comes to speak would you would you consider that a better uh, one Councillor Wellham would you like to just say yes or no and we'll move on to you at that point? Chair, yeah, I don't want to spend too much time answering other people's questions when I'm making my presentation. So, no, no, I'm, we've come to that afterwards. Okay, I'm happy to cover but, it but after I mean, the presentation. Who was, who was the author of the neighbourhood plan? The the author the authors were a a group of volunteers headed by a charter town planner and advised by another charter town planner um, and. All of the uh, policies and so on were run through um, district council pla policy, planning policy officers, um, and obviously everything then okay. went through the inspector. Right. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that point if we need to on that. Um, does that sort of um, is that all right with you, Councillor Gould, to do that at that I, point? I, yeah. I, I mind less who answers it as long as I I, I understand how the as numbers are. As long as you get it, which Thank is you. fair enough. We've had part answer there. Um, I, I don't wish to ask any further questions. Councillor Haddingham. Thank you. Yeah, it's just a really quick one. Um, Vincent, you said several times the Bloor site, we approved it. Was Did we approve it or did it come through on appeal? <laughs> That's a good point. I'm going to have to well, double I check I that because I, I, yeah, I think. I think I can tell you the answer to that one because I was the chair of that one and we refused it yes. and it went to appeal. Yes. Oh. I, did, I, did, I had that thought and I was just thinking you said several no, times we approved no, that and I no, thought did you really. I thank you for your um, accuracy. I apologise to members. I, I wasn't deliberately seeking to mislead the the committee. That was before my time, but I should have researched it. So thank you, Councillor. That's a valuable um, insight. Yeah, I think what happened there was it got approved the outline and then we had to approve the reserve matters, which is where you would get your information, yes. I presume. Councillor Hicks, do you have any questions for clarity? No, thanks. Not at this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Humphreys. No, thank you, Madam Chair. No questions. Thank you. Councillor Mansell. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I actually have a number of questions. Um, I, I've honed them down to four. Is that allowed or do you want me to only do three? <laughs> well, as long as they offer clarity and not debate, keep right. going. Um, we'll my we my first question, uh, can, do you want me to do them all together or one at no, a time? let's do them one at a time. Right. First of all, can you tell me what facilities are currently open? You know, there are some facilities at Walnut Tree Farm. At yeah, at present, I haven't been out on the site since end of March. I don't know what's happened during the COVID situation. Maybe I'll ask that to somebody else then. Yeah, if there's okay. someone I think you parish. can probably get Councillor Weller okay. might help us on that um, one. Next question. The, the green islands that are part of the pavement widening scheme, uh, is it would it, is it uh, are they going to be a permeable surface or will they be hard impermeable concrete or tarmac they would be whatever suffolk county council feels appropriate for those locations bearing in mind that they would need to be designed to facilitate 
pedestrians and wheeled users. Do we John, just want to ask Sam if there's any further to add to that? If that's the answer, that's fine. Does Sam want to add anything to it? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, it's, it would be to Suffolk County Council specifications, so it would not be permeable. We do not allow permeable surfacing within the highway, I'm afraid, not at the present time. So yeah. everything will be um, uh, metalled. Thank you. At least that's a, a clear answer. Um, next question. One of um, Vincent's slides, I think it was to do with the place services comment, uh, talked about protecting oaks to the south of the site. I wonder if somebody could point them out on a map. Sorry, uh, Councillor, I'm just getting some slides up. I think that is something you might have to trust me that we might well be looking at behind the scenes. Can we park that one for the moment, to Councillor Mansell? So I just wonder what, what what does it mean behind the scenes? <laughs> I would say giving the planners the authority to to check that, but I could be wrong no. on. Well, the answer is, if we're looking to put a TPO on something, the last thing you do is announce that you're going to do it. OK, fine, that's fine. <laughs> right, my last question, um, well, my of the four questions that I, I, I've got, um, you talked about the highway improvements around the junction of the B, treble one five and yeah. the A, whatever it is. Yes. Um, uh, and I got a bit confused. Uh, can I, I'd like a bit of clarity about the, there's £50,000. Was that either to improve the width of the junction and put a right-only lane in, and or to do something with the cycle route, which currently stops short of that junction if you're coming up from Stowe Market. Yeah. Was it one or the other or both? Sorry, I'm confused, but you've actually got it right. It could be both, depending on how much the improvements cost. However, was another solution to come forward from other development? Because you'll recall that in the recent past, there have been proposals for Asher's Farm and Diapers Farm. If another solution came forward, that 50,000 would all be available for cycle improvements. So what we've done is rather than risk losing it because we, we didn't need to put the right turn in, we have secured a cascade that then means we can think about cycle improvements. And again, if only 30 of that is spent on junction improvements, that gives us 20 for cycle improvements. I hope that explains it uh, yeah, a little can more I, clearly. Can I just, uh, so that your answer is, is nice and clear, but I'm presuming that the, the right turn lane is a higher priority than improving the cycle path. That's how it was put to us um, locally, that, that that improvement to that junction was needed. OK, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mansell. You asked a couple of my questions there, so it was very helpful. Councillor Matheson, yes, any thank questions you. The, for clarity, please? Yes, absolutely. The Yes, um, we've just largely addressed the first one of my questions. Um, Good. Thank you. Um, I would... I would say that 50,000 is definitely not going no, to do both jobs. No, we're not debating that. What is your question? So please? I would like, yes. So can we make the priority of the cycle junction? That and then no. next question. <laughs> right. Uh, nice, easy one. Um, we've we've reduced the developable area by increasing these buffers, and we've increased the number of houses um, as well as up to. Um, could we have the, the before and after densities on that one? And perhaps we can leave that one for a minute and I do have an answer, answer a bit later no, I, on. I, I do have an well, answer. Well, we have got an answer to oh, that. Oh, I asked oh, the question fine. myself in briefing. So, Vince, fire away. The adjacent Bloor development has a net density of 43 dwellings per hectare. This, if it were approved, would have a net density of 34 dwellings per hectare with the uplifted number and the reduced site area, developable site area. Thank you. And um, that's uh, all uh, your questions. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, I've got one, one, one more. The, um, the, the that really that relates to the the protection of trees, which I think someone someone started on already. I, I was rather concerned to see that the the hedge between the the, the site and the arable field to the um, loosely east um, is actually is actually 
quite low, quite low down. Um, ca can we be assured that we're, we're going to get some proper trees uh, into into the um, planting scheme there? Not have it all cut down to three foot. Yes. Right. Thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor Matheson. Councillor Mallon, do you have any questions, please? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Although uh, Miloni colleagues ahead of me have got to a couple of them already. I, I just need the questions. Uh, okay. Can I just have a clarification? Um, Vince, you mentioned in your report that this secures a cycle route from Thorny Green to the school. Um, in my understanding, Thorny Green is immediately adjacent to the school, so I'm not sure. Does that mean uh, a road frontage cycle route, um, you know, in front of the church there? You, yeah, I was thinking along uh, Church Road and then you you could nip in off of that access, the vehicular access to the school that's just a little further south than... Um, at, the, at the Crown? Yes. OK, can I just yes. check, is, is the width of the path and the bits you're going to take out of Verge, is that fully appropriate um, for cycles and pedestrians for that whole I, Yeah. I will let uh, my colleague Sam from Highways answer that. I believe there are sections that would, there will be pinch, still be pinch points that will be below that. But I, I defer to her advice on how you deal with a cycle route that's less than three. Yes, hello. Um, yes, uh, Mr. Pierce is correct that it would be the majority of it is requested to be so three metres, but there are a, a number of pinch points. Just also to let you know that there is a scheme that Suffolk County Council has been working with Stow Upland Parish and the school to get a cycle route to the school via um, the, the um, Thorny Green area. Uh, that is coming to fruition as well. So it may not be on plan yet, but I know that that is uh, coming forward. Any further questions? That's all, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Mayer, any questions? No, Chair. Thank you. Nothing at this time. Thank you. Councillor Muller? Uh, no questions at this stage. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Norris? My uh, question has already been asked. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Councillor Stringer? Thank you, Chair. Yes, I'm afraid I still have three questions. Uh, one of which is about the securing of the crossing. Uh, I've, I've been doing this long enough to have, have seen three applications where we tried to condition a crossing at exactly this point, and we were told it hadn't been through. It could, wouldn't. It wouldn't pass a safety audit. So, can I ask whether this proposal has w would pass such a safety audit? Uh, when all the others wouldn't, because obviously if it if it's not safe to build, we might condition it, but it then never get built. And we've got a number of paths like that across the district. There, that is one, I think, for my highway colleague to comment on in terms of the next next stages. Yes, thank you. Um, the the Parish Council, along with Suffolk Highways, has come up with a feasibility study for a crossing in this general area. At the moment, what the Suffolk Highways are pr proposing is that with pedestrian surveys to be undertaken and uh, vehicle, we were able to get vehicle surveys, but obviously when it came to the, the latest uh, situation with the pandemic, we were unable to get a, a a true reflection on the pedestrians walking in the area so that is one thing that we would ask for would, would be for pedestrian surveys to come forward then it has been looked at with regard to a safety audit uh, with its, the feasibility and this location could be looked at but there would be a need to talk to the adjacent landowner as in the co-op because we need to ask them to change some slight changes to their access arrangements. Obviously, if they turn and categorically say no, then we'd have to relook at it, but I would think it would be in their best interest for them to um, be able to help us with this crossing point. Um, can I actually come in there and, and just say that um, uh, from that point of view, um, it would seem sensible to should members be minded to be looking positively at this, that we 
is it possible for us to put a condition in that we get, shall we call it legwork, done at an early stage so that that can be made very clear so that if um, you do find a suitable and um, everything ticks all the boxes with Councillor Stringer's comments there, um, would we be able to, if we if we think on, and I know we haven't finished with Councillor Stringer, but could we put in a condition that brings forward all those inquiries rather than leaving it at the end of the day? Is that something possible we could do? Sorry, shall I chip in? I think at the moment, yeah. Chair, we're suggesting um, no occupation of the development until that crossing is in. But I think there is, you're right, there is an earlier stage that we could actually require the full details of that crossing to be part of the reserved matters submission. So as you were looking at all the reserved matters, you would have that detail in front of you at that stage. Having done all the legwork. I'm sorry, I'm sort of no, it. Yeah, no, having done all the legwork. But I would say Look, that is possible, but we might want to discuss that a bit further when we're into the... Further down the road. Yeah. Councillor Stringer, you've got three questions and there's some more to... I'm sorry I butted in on your thing, but... Yeah, so, so, so in brief, the answer to the first question is no, this has not been through a safety audit. So uh, that's all I wanted to know. The You mentioned the allocations in the draft joint local plan. Uh, and, and you put it down as an allocation twice and not a draft allocation. So can you confirm... That the in terms of the joint local plan you are referring to the first draft and not the emerging second draft because they may well be different i am referring to the preferred options document of july 2019 yes we, 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 which is not which is not the second draft uh, okay uh, we you mention that this village has a deficit in terms of housing delivery numbers. Yet, ha having worked on a panel looking at this for the joint local plan, we, we, we don't do numbers per village, we do it by class of village. So I don't know how you can substantiate, you, how do you substantiate a deficit in one village when we don't look at it at a planning level with at just one village, we look at across it as a, a band of villages. I'm highlighting a distinction between the number of allocations in the neighbourhood plan and the number of allocations set out to meet the identified requirement in the draft joint local plan. It, it's a, a difference. That's what I have done. Uh, okay, do, do, do you just mind if I come back on that? Because this next question is with my final question, is absolutely crucial. So, so if from your point of view, if the draft if the second draft local plan did not include this site, would it change your mind? Um, I think, Councillor Stringer, that's not quite the right question to ask. We haven't got all these through and you're asking hypothesis. So I, I think that's a bit of an unfair question to ask the planner at this stage. And I know I've worked on the JLP with you, so I know where you're coming from. Well, I'm happy to defer to uh, Mr Isbell if we get to that point. Do you wish me to um, chip in, Chairman? Well, if you think it's appropriate, yes. Um, well, well, Chairman, I mean, we're, we're talking about uh, identified need and other issues. And clearly, um, the JLP is a draft document subject to consultation. And there is work being done to review all of those things. What we do know is that the uh, draft JLP has a uh, an identified requirement for houses. And as in its present formulation, it, it talks of 752 being the allocation for this uh, th this particular village. Now, all those things may change, but those are the facts as we have them today. Uh, and you have to make the decision on the information as you have it before you. And in terms of an identified requirement, uh, clearly th that's where the district is in terms of its information. Uh, and that's the present day uh, compared to the situation that was uh, the case when the neighbourhood plan was prepared. And obviously, I mean, I think if you uh, refer to page 44 of the committee report, you'll see there's uh, mention of the neighbourhood plans uh, team's work on uh, 40, 42, sorry, not 44. You'll see there's reference to the work the neighbourhood plan group did around this. And at that time, uh, they said it wasn't possible to provide certainty on the likely requirement for Stow Upland at present. 
um, because a higher figure than, than that provided for in the neighbourhood plan cannot be ruled out. So I think there was some uncertainty about the figure for housing. Uh, but my instinct is that the advice the district was giving the neighbourhood plan group uh, w when it was doing its work and at the examination was that there was the potential for more houses to be uh, anticipated at the district level. That's all I want to say, Chairman. Thank you for that. And Councillor Stringer, I'm sure if you want to bring that up in the debate, that would be very helpful. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Warboys. Yeah, I, yes, just well, one question now. The second one was just answered about the feasibility of the crossing. Um, but this is also back, back to Suffolk County Council, I think. It's to do with the capacity of Freeman um, County Primary. In the neighbourhood plan, this was already oversubscribed in 2018 and students were being mostly bus down to Cedars Primary School down the bottom, I, I assume via the 1120, A1120. Um, is it possible, um, as we talked about um, ensuring that the feasibility in, in the document, let me go back a bit, sorry, in the document. Well, can we have the question? Yeah, it is, but I need to put, right. There are plans for expansion to Freeman CP. The clear strategy for this is not identified at this moment in time. Is it possible, as we talk, doing the legwork for the feasibility of the crossing, to also ensure that this um, strategy for the expansion of Freeman Primary School is also determined before the development takes place? That... I would suggest it's a matter for our county colleagues, but what we are suggesting at their uh, request is that we secure the requisite education contribution through 106 for them to be able to provide additional spaces. By all means, we can ask them, were you minded to grant permission, how they are intending to do that. But for the purpose of this application, we are securing the sum that was asked by Suffolk County Council to provide the necessary extra spaces in the village. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for your question. And Councillor Eburn, as the ward member, would you like to ask a question, please? Thank you very much indeed, Chair. Yes, just a quick one, please. Um, just with regards to um, planning policy, um, I just wanted to know why they hadn't there wasn't any consultation response from them for this um, particular um, application, whereas there was in the previous one. And on pages 41 to 42, um, references made to the previous response um, in your papers, for pa bottom page 41 to page 42. So I just wondered why there wasn't a response for this one. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor they hadn't changed their their mind the fact that it was allocated in the jlp was sufficient for them to say that they would be supporting it in in the draft yes in the draft yes okay. any further question councillor eban no thank you chair thank you very much indeed and now um councillor wellham for questions um for the officer please Thank you, Chair. Can I point out some errors in some of the slides and the description there too, please, um, before we go much further? Um, can I, I mean, I'll put them in the form of a question if you like, but I, I mean, I, I am aware that there are some errors. Uh, if we look at, at slide 47. No, it isn't 47. It's the one showing, I thought it was 47, it's the one showing the puffing crossing. Perhaps it, was that the one that was up a minute ago? I believe it was, yeah. Well, the, the one where it shows the sort of dimensions of it and everything. Yeah, um, because... There it is. There, there yeah. Is. Um, yeah, that, that drawing is... And I think Sam can probably support me on this. That is that is a a drawing, or it is identical to a drawing which was prepared some years ago um, by Suffolk Highways, 
when the parish council were seeking to have an uncontrolled crossing there um, and the outcome of that the fees of yeah, hang on um councillor well and what's the what's the error on this please um it is it is purporting to show a controlled crossing at a location where the um the county council has already said it, it cannot be fitted in so why are we showing it so perhaps sam could answer that for us please Yes, thank you, Chair. The The sketch that's shown there is just showing that the rough location of the crossing point. Unfortunately, we don't have any images of a controlled crossing point there uh, at present time because it's, it's just um, been put to the, the applicant that they will provide it. The, um, the location is where we think we can get in a controlled crossing point roughly in that area. Can I just add something, Chair, with your permission? Yeah. Councillor Wellham is right, and I, I accept that that drawing was what was originally submitted with this current proposal, and it did show an uncontrolled crossing. At Councillor Wellham's request, I negotiated a, a controlled crossing, and we now have a commitment from Gladmans to deliver a controlled crossing. But what I've done there simply to reflect that change is identifying green new controlled crossing and at the bottom I've got type and detail subject to further discussion so that was the original drawing with an annotation to say it will be controlled and not uncontrolled and that detail will change as more detail is is unearthed but councillor Willem is absolutely right that was the original drawing and doesn't show a puffin I think that's very helpful because um, having worked with Councillor Wellham on, on planning before, he's very experienced at this yes. uh, matter and um, I'm grateful for him pointing out um, the uh, error, shall we say. Thank you for that. And what was the other error, Councillor Wellham, uh, please? On slide 51, I hope it's like slide 51, I may have made a mistake here. Um, the photograph uh, that um, the office, no, it is, I've got the wrong number, it's the one where, uh, Vince, you said, this is a photograph of the village hall uh, uh, with the path going in front of the village hall. Um, yeah, I should get there in a moment. There we go, there Councillor. Is, yeah. um, that, that, actually, that actually is the chapel, not the village hall. Um, and there, the width there is 1.6 metres. This is one of the wider points. Um, uh, I mean, there's two questions here. How are you going to deal with the worst pinch points where you've only got one metre available to get your cycle track through? Um, and the second question is, um, really to Sam, would she accept that 1.6 metres, that's wide enough for a shared use cycle track beside an A road? Shall I just deal with the um, village hall? Apologies, uh, Councillor, it's just that you and I have met there <laughs> on occasion, yeah. and I've unfortunately I I've assumed that's the village hall, but I'm I'm quite happy to accept that that was wrong, and it is in fact the chapel. But I know we met there. We did uh, with others. Thank you, uh, Sam. I don't know whether you want to deal Sam, with. Sam, can you comment on the the other questions, please? Yes, we we're not looking for a shared cycle route actually along the A1120. As I said before, I know that there is a cycle scheme being put forward by our strategy team for for Stowe Upland to get children to school and that cycle scheme is coming to fruition soon. So this isn't somewhere where we would want cycling to be going along the footway on, as, as the councillor says, along an A road where there are some pinch points uh, along this busy road. Can, can I, can I ha help further? I think the the scheme that Sam is referring to, the blacktop is already on the green. And I think that is the scheme that, that has been put into the future proposals of Suffolk County Council, the one that is already there on the ground and leads across Thorny Green to the high school. Um, uh, Councillor, can we come into that when we come to your speech rather than debating uh, yeah. it now, if you um, would? OK. Um, any other questions you have, please? Yeah, yeah. Uh, slide what I thought was slide 59, it's the, it's the slide of Thradstone's Menno, which seems to show some trees in the middle of it. I think, I think that uh, that's 
artistic license. Um, but more importantly, I think it was on slide 67 when um, the presenting officer was talking about the key views out of the village and he was saying that the um, there isn't a key view towards the site. That is because, that's it, that is because the key that is showing the key views out of the village. Um, paragraph 5413 of, um, of the neighbourhood plan speaks about the valued role of the open agricultural character of and around this site. So please don't think that because th there isn't a, 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 a blue is question. On the what is the question? Uh, well, it's really, uh, no, it's a correction that... that uh, well, well, we're on questions, really. You know, you've got, you, you'll have your time to tell us all this in your, in your ward members. Okay. Right. Last one. Last, last point on the slides. Uh, and that is, um, what are the environmental improvements or the environment improvements of the 1120-1115 junction? I believe I've described those in terms of the. Uh... Was that was that the tarmacking of some of the grass to make a cycle track? In terms of the environment of that, yes. I wasn't. Right. I wasn't describing that as an environmental in terms of of uh, green and biodiversity. That's just the junction environment. So apologies if that has has resulted in any confusion. Can, can um, yeah, that's that's fine. Uh, am I allowed to ask the officer if he has read the feasibility study uh, for the crossing point, which has been completed by Suffolk County Council? And if he has, and if he has it to hand, perhaps he could read the summary and the conclusion, because this is this is vitally important to dealing with this this matter, because the conclusion is read on the, uh, various points it is not feasible so we're talking about carrying out a safety audit when the feasibility study has already been done so there's no need for doing the legwork much of the legwork has already been done well, paid for your question it's it's your question you're going into debate keith you've right. got to just ask the question has he read it and and then we can talk about yeah. it when we get to you i'm right. sorry but this is just uh, slowing down our sort of process that right. we want you to tell us everything at the right time if right. you would please right can, okay well Shall I answer? Please, can you yeah. answer the question have you read it yes or no i don't need to because i rely on my highway colleagues to give me highway advice okay well we'll come on to that when we when we go through the debate okay um uh, have a you a further question, Councillor? Yeah, uh, could, could I could I have it explained to me what a Grampian condition is? Because please, can you do yeah. that for us, please? Yes, a Grampian condition is named after the authority in Scotland that first used it, and it is it goes along the lines of you cannot do something until something else happens. That something else in this case would be the delivery of the crossing. So, just to be clear, the delivery of the crossing has to precede the building of the houses. Occupation is what we are suggesting. Well, this is where I this is where I worried. So, does that therefore mean that the houses could be built and sold, um, and Suffolk County Council are still saying it's not feasible? What we discussed in the in the earlier preamble was a mechanism whereby that might be possible to avoid that situation, and we were going to come onto that in the discussion. Um, are you right. all, uh, Thank you. Yeah. I think I think that's sufficient, Councillor Wellham. We, we will hear you on your full explanations, concerns and everything in your ward member bit. Um, unless there is a specific question, we really must move on. Uh, one specific question, and that is to do with the, the comment that the, the officer has said, what is clearly evident is that Church Road has an adequate footway. Um, now, uh, does he consider that a, a footway less than one metre wide is adequate? Is he aware that Suffolk County Council and their road safety officer has considered it unsafe and unsuitable and set aside funds for a scheme to provide an off-road facility? 
Um, and could he therefore explain why the committee should take his advice on pedestrian safety rather than that of the road safety officer? Because the inspector, as it happened, allowed 175 dwellings to be uh, serviced from Church Road in terms of pedestrian activity and decided not to refuse it on highway safety grounds. Right. OK. Thank you for that. So um, we don't have a representative from the parish council, although we do have Councillor Wellham. I believe um, you're still with the parish council. Are you not, Councillor Wellham? I am, yes. Yeah, I don't know. Um, OK. Uh, we don't have an objector or a supporter. So I'll ask the applicant to speak, Stuart Carvel. Um, you have three minutes to speak, if you would, please. Um, thank you very much for the officer and his comprehensive um, report and presentation. Um, following the committee's decision to refuse that first application in January, we carefully considered those reasons for refusal and have sought to bring back um, to the committee addressing your concerns through this new planning application. I'm extremely grateful for your office assistance um, at the uh, local authority and the county council for um, working f with us on those. The application now more closely aligns with the dwelling numbers expected across this and the neighbouring law site in the council's emerging local plan. <coughs> in response to the comments by the committee regarding Thrasso's Meadow, de developable areas being pulled back significantly, allowing further green space uh, and areas for sustainable drainage in excess of the county council's flooding team's requirements. Um, there is a commitment to finding the solution for the crossing to the cart for the benefit of all residents um, which will be secured as, as you previously discussed, as well as those improvements around um, the Church Road and Stone Market Road junction. The scheme is in a sustainable location, identified in the Council's A14 growth corridor with close access to services and facilities in Stonemark, including the mainline railway station. Um, we have discussed um, with members of the Parish Council about to allow that transfer of Thradstone's Meadow into, their, into public ownership for the benefit and how they wish to manage it with an appropriate um, payment for them to do so. Um, Section 106 is really at a draft stage, um, sorry, an advanced stage, um, and there's payments towards um, the school places and preschools where those are necessary. Um, the parish should also receive 25% of SIL funding as it has a made neighbourhood plan in this situation. Um, and I, just to conclude, I request, request respectfully the grant planning permission for this because it meets the council's emerging local plan and importantly secures neighbourhood plans, um, aspirations for Thradstone's me Meadow and improved connectivity for the benefit of all the residents of Starkland. Thank you. Thank you for that. Do we have questions for the applicant? And I'll run through again in the same order, if I may, please. Councillor Custon? No questions, thank you. Councillor Field? No questions. Councillor Gould? No questions. I don't either. Councillor Lavinia Haddingham? No, thank you. Councillor Hicks? No, thank you. Councillor Humphreys? No, thank you. Councillor Mansell? Uh, no, thank you. Councillor Matheson? No, thank you. Councillor Mallon? No questions. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Mayor? Nothing, thank you. Councillor Muller? None, thank you, Chair. Councillor Norris? No questions, thank you. Councillor Stringer. Uh, just, just one chair. Uh, it's over the crossing, the the drawing of your uh, potential crossing. How will the new houses access the road with an island in the way? Uh, because the the drawing doesn't, your drawing doesn't show it, but the reality does. Because I remember I being on the committee opposite the co-op, there are two new dwellings with two new driveways there exactly where your island is going to be so how will those properties turn left and right coming out of their driveway with an island in the way the drawing proposed was an indicative location um, and as um, mr pierce described that was for an indicative location of where um a crossing could be but the precise details will be subject to um those detailed road safety audits so that detail will 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 come at a later stage so, 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 so you weren't able to show. Is then is there no possibility you could show us a plan of a possible location rather than one where it's not possible? The it would have, as I say, it would have to go through that full road safety audit process in terms of 
um, the type of crossing to be delivered, whether that would be um, the Toucan or the Puffin, and then the exact location, and it would go through that stage one and stage two road safety audit process. So that that information isn't here at the moment, but that is what will come through as required by the condition. Thank you, Councillor Stringer. Is that sufficient for your questioning? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stringer. Councillor Warboys? No questions. Thank you. Councillor Eburn? No questions, thank you, Chair. And Councillor Wallam? No questions, thank you. Thank you for that. So, um, I will now come to the ward members and um, first of all, may we have Councillor Eburn, please? Um, thank you very much, Chair, and thank you very much to officers for the um, comprehensive presentation. Um, firstly, I'd like to support the Parish Council in asking that this application be refused. It's against the Neighbourhood Plan, as well as the NPPF, the National Planning Policy Framework. So it's against the most local of policies, as well as the national. There's lots of references um, within the papers and the presentation to the emerging draft joint local plan. Um, however, the priority really should be the neighbourhood plan. This application is also outside the settlement boundary. And the issue with that, with that is the previous, a previous application, um, which was refused by this, by this council and then went to appeal was on the edge of the village boundary. And there is an edge there that had planting and trees and so on as a landscape buffer. We've now got another edge, you know, one edge follows another edge, and then where will the edges end? The edge of this village should be the landscape that we are currently looking at, which is a rur rural landscape that is not special maybe in the official definition of the word but it is special to the residents of Stowe Upland and it is a very valuable landscape. You're asking, you're being asked to approve um, this application and the much discussion so far or questioning or um, information is about proposed housing numbers for Stowe Upland. It's a village of 600, of approximately 600 homes. So already approved is a significant number, which will more than ha half again for the village of 600 homes. And even if you were to go to look at the proposed allocations in the emerging joint local plan, that would more than double the size of the village. And their own neighbourhood plan has put forward significant numbers, which are already being met. The main changes that have been made to this application versus the one that was refused back in January are to do with the amount of housing, adding another 10 extra housing, um, some landscape changes within the site and the proposed crossing by the newly revamped co-op. However, notwithstanding the neighbourhood plan, there are three main reasons why this should be refused. We've already had questions with regards to the crossing and there isn't any firm confirmation that this can actually be achieved. I've sat in planning um, committees where we've had detailed um, drawings from highways it's stating exactly how a crossing can be achieved. And I'm very concerned that we can't, won't be able to achieve what, what is needed and there won't be the money for it. We'd also need um, funding to actually have a cycleway and um, pedestrian walkway that's safe for people to use. And if all the funding is used up in a in a crossing that might, will take more than is already being asked for, then because what we're looking at isn't necessarily achievable, then that's going to be very difficult. Secondly, there's a discussion about sustainable location the distance to the train station in Stone Market. Now that's only possible if you don't commute on particular days of the week and you've got very set working times in terms of using the buses. And ideally you'd want people to cycle into the station. But again, there isn't a, a, a safe cycle route and 
I would have hoped to have seen um, funding towards one connecting up the route that goes um, through other parts of Stone Market. And thirdly, the rural landscape will be irretrievably damaged. It's an open rural landscape, as I've said, and landscape buffers such as trees will change this as much as housing estates will. So we have got further um, obstructions within the landscape than already exist. But most importantly, as the parish council said, this is contrary to the, their own neighbourhood plan policies. Not much has really changed from the previous ap application you refused. A few more houses, an unworkable highway solution and a landscape buffer in the rural edge of village area that should really remain open. And for these reasons, I urge you to refuse this application. Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Eburn. Now, um, do you have questions? Um, would, you, would you be happy if, I, if we have the questions to you first, Councillor, before um, Councillor Wellham says his bit? Can we do it in that basis? I think it would be preferable to have that? questions to both of us, if that's all right. So if we hear from Councillor Wellham first. Time. Hear from Councillor Wellham first. OK, then, fine. I just wanted to know which way you wanted it. Councillor Wellham, if you'd like to give us your views on this. I know um, there was a lot you were going to tell us earlier, so please. Thank you. Um, yeah, can I can I put together my own views and the views of the parish council so that you get them all in one go rather than separately? Oh, keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, so here we go again. This time the committee has to consider an application for 80 homes, having refused an application for 70 homes on the same site. The officer is correct in his report to state that the neighbourhood plan must be given full weight. But then instead of following the MPPF, he sets about trying to persuade the committee that despite the evidence, he recommends approval, despite the conflicts with the neighbourhood plan. The starting point for considering this application is that Stoke Upland has an approved neighbourhood plan, approved and made by this council just a year ago. It has a site allocation in line with advice from planning officers at the time and accepted by the examiner. And the, examina uh, the application site is not included in that allocation or within the proposed settlement boundary. Paragraph 12 of MPPF states, where a planning application conflicts with an up-to-date development plan, including any neighbourhood plan, permission should not usually be granted. So the officer needs to produce strong reasoning why the neighbourhood plan should not be overridden and there are no such reasons given thus far. The proposal is in conflict with part nine of the NPPF, especially paragraphs 103 and 102. Due to the distance from the site to employment opportunities, retail outlets, etc., and the lack of a bus service, except very occasionally a bus to Stone Market, the majority of trips will be by private car. The value of Threadstone's meadow has been reduced by the proximity of new homes already, and that makes it more important that there is no building along the west side. The landscape consultant to the neighbourhood plan makes it clear a proposal in this location will negatively impact the rural settlement fringe character. The development will have a detrimental impact on the rural setting of the village and will be further encroaching into the countryside. There is a requirement to retain the open agricultural use of this land for arable or pasture. The minor economic benefits are far outweighed by the greater environmental and social disbenefits, but the proposal is clearly not in accordance with, with Council's development plan and that points members directly towards a refusal. Mid Suffolk has a five year supply of housing land, local schools are full, health centres can take no more patients, Community infrastructure is already stretched and the current village facilities will not be able to provide fully for the residents of the dwellings already approved. I'm pleased that since the previous application was refused, Suffolk Highways have accepted that highway improvements are required. The Parish Council back in January commissioned Suffolk Highways to carry out a feasibility study for a crossing facility of the A1120 at the co-op filling station. After around four months and using a fee of £4,000, the report was received stating that no feasible solution could be identified. This was followed a little later by an email from today's presenting officer explaining that the reasons for refusal of the earlier application had been overcome as Gladman would provide a controlled crossing subject to SCC approval. 
the parish council has already been given the information that this committee needs. There is no feasible controlled crossing scheme. This is a key element of the officer's argument and it falls at the first hurdle. It would be very unwise to approve an application with a planning condition that cannot be implemented. And it would be equally unwise to approve an application which would be unsustainable and just add to the traffic and safety hazards which already exist. I was advised by one senior planning officer for, that for the application to be refused, a site within the village to accommodate 70 to 80 new homes would need to be identified. A site to accommodate those homes was put forward. The landowners are willing. The site was considered by the cross party joint local plan working group. The result of their deliberations in respect of that suggestion are key. Some of those in this meeting know the result and may already be aware that this site will not be in the next version of the site allocations. I was told that information would be made available to me, but subsequently I've been told otherwise. So if there are members of that working group on this committee who know the outcome, and if that outcome is for this application site to be saved from development, will they vote for refusal today? In any case, surely it is unsafe to approve this application for so many other reasons. And I wonder if planning policy could have changed their advice, they could have given some further information as a result of the working group meetings. The Parish Council are totally against allowing this development. Their reasons are clearly set out in their objection letter. Due to holiday commitments and a feeling of pressure from planning officers to accept that development is inevitable, they are not entering this meeting. At the request of officers, the Parish Council have set out in a letter the conditions under which the Council would take on the land. You will see that the Parish Council have, has again reiterated its objection to the application. Members have strong grounds for refusing this application based on NPPF paragraph 12, paragraphs 102 and 103 and neighbourhood plan policies. Officers appear to have assessed this application on the basis of paragraph 11D of the, neighbourhood, of the NPPF as if the neighbourhood plan does not exist. It is clear in any case that the social, road safety and environmental dis dis benefits outweigh any economic benefit. I go back to paragraph 12 of MPPF, which states where a planning application conflicts with an up to date development plan, including any neighbourhood plan, permission should not usually be granted. So I conclude this application needs to be refused. Chair, if I might just yeah, butt might. in very quickly, I think someone is sharing their screen possibly. Um, could everyone just check? It might be someone said it's possibly Councillor Gould, um, but I can't see who it is on my screen who is actually sharing. So if uh, I think it's now gone back to, yes, I believe it's returned to normal now, Chair. Thank you very much. Guilty as charged, uh, <laughs> <and> Chair. <laughs> Nothing gets past us, does it? <laughs> Um, it, was it the only one person sharing? I thought there were others. So, Chair, there was a, um, I think it was possibly Councillor Eburn as well, by mistake as well, but um, we're now back to um, as we were. OK, right. Thank you. Um, can we um, go on to uh, questions for the ward members? And do you both want to sort of answer them as they come up? Um, we'll see what the questions are and whoever can go for it. I'll leave you, uh, Councillor Eburn and Councillor Wellham. Is that all right? Yeah. OK, so Councillor Caston, do you have any questions for the ward members? Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Um, this is um, this is directed at uh, um, ward members and the parish council members. Um, are there, this is a viability of the arable land question. Do you know of any issues that have affected the activity of farming on the land, um, notably objections from residents to um, the mud on the roads and issues like that? No, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not aware of. I'm not aware of anything. There was 
one encroachment onto Thradstone's meadow um, by uh, somebody in an off-road vehicle who went round and round in circles and then drove away. But that's the only problem that I'm aware of in respect of that land. None for me either. Councillor Keston. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Field. Thank you. I think uh, that presentation was pretty comprehensive. Uh, perhaps the only question is around numbers. I mean, clearly the district has to deliver a, a number of houses uh, for pe people need those. Um, uh, I understood Councillor Wellham to say there were alternative sites to this one which had been agreed. Could you just confirm that again, please? Uh, yeah, um, there is an approval for 143, which was not in the neighbourhood plan. Um, uh, uh, the the neighbourhood plan and the, the presenting officer quite rightly said the neighbourhood plan should be updated annually. Well, um, because of COVID, that has not yet been possible, and it's now probable that uh, rather than update it at the minute, uh, it would be sensible to wait for the next stage of the joint local the draft joint local plan to come out. Um, so there would be there would be different numbers. Um, the, uh, there are 300, I think it's 300 shown uh, on land owned by Nimya, uh, nearer to the A14 with direct access from that site uh, onto uh, the 1115 and from there straight down to the station. So that is, that is a site which Parish Council has discussed that site with the owner and agent and various other people who would like to develop that site. Um, Originally, they wanted between 600 and 650 homes on that site, which Parish Council were very unhappy about. Um, the draft joint local plan suggests 300, and it would make much more sense for there to be 370, say, on there, rather than 300 near uh, Stone Market and 70 as far away as you can possibly get. Um, so it makes much more sense for the for the the 70 or 80 or however many might be approved for this site or, or, or applied for on this site, much more sensible for those to be um, to be nearer to Stone Market. And, and I put that suggestion forward and I hope it has been discussed by the working group. I had hoped and I'd asked this question at council that, that I'd be told whether or not that bid was successful and what the what the next stage of the local plan would show uh, but I have I was originally told yes you can have that information subsequently I've been told not but I believe that there are some who are sitting today who may know the answer to that. Sorry Chair may I just make a very quick observation if I may? Yes. Obviously, we have the application in front of us, or rather you have the application in front of you today. The JLP preferred options document is a published document. I think the um, the matter that Councillor Welleming is referring to, I'm not aware of the, the outcome of that. It's certainly not in the published version of the JLP, and the local development uh, strategy suggests that we won't be adopting a JLP until 21-22. It is, um, you are under a duty now to consider what's in front of you rather than what might be available sometime next year. Sorry to cut in, but I think I needed to stress that. Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah, Chairman, yes, can I can I just chip in? Yes, you can actually, because I was going to call you in on, on one or two yeah. other issues, but we're on questions for the ward members, but um, some of your comments might um, yeah. help the questioners. Well, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll deal with it as you, as you wish, Chairman. There are a couple of points on, on both crossing and neighbourhood plan, which I think is worth yeah. addressing. But in terms of in terms of the work around the draft JLP, it's still a draft. So any discussion that has been had around uh, the, the, the draft documentation is still a draft. And you have to decide the application not on, on, on that, but on uh, the facts that you have before you and the material considerations as they present themselves, which I, I think I did say earlier. Uh, the end result is, I think, you know, whatever the JLP does with this site or any other is not for the consideration of a development control committee on, or, or a planning referrals committee. Um, the other points on the crossing, Jim, do you want me to come back to those Yeah, ones? no, you might as well just do it now in case the questions come up for the ward members. Uh, 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 thank you, Jim. Help. 
appreciate the op- appreciate the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, as I understand it, the uh, the crossing question um, is is something which I believe the earlier uh, provision of a crossing is not the same as what's currently being uh, in concept. And and as 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 is mentioned by events, we take our advice from Suffolk County Council Highways. And I would suggest that you take the opportunity of of asking Sam Harvey just to. F- to, to pick out the detail of that because this question of safety audit on a crossing and the previous design of a, of a zebra crossing which i think on this busy road is a problem i don't think that would necessarily be the case for some other design of crossing uh, and i understand that there have been accidents on this point with people crossing to the shop so actually there is a a clear highway benefit to delivering a crossing here and, and strictly speaking the question of whether that's a necessary benefit. I mean, it's certainly probably a benefit to the village. It's almost certainly a benefit to future occupants of this development. But arguably, um, there the question of of timing. We can we can discuss the question of how to how to to, to look at that. Uh, its provision. There are conditions. There is a planning obligation. Those are for discussion in debate. If if this is the direction the application goes, but in terms of the start of a ten, which appears to be Councillor Wellam and, and, and others starter that that this is. Uh, fundamentally uh, flawed that's not the advice as I have it from County Highway Authority and perhaps at that point I would suggest you might want to take the advice of, of Sam Harvey as as the horse's mouth if I would put it like that secondly uh, the question of they put plan there are some points on there but I think probably better to deal with the crossing is, is one thing and, and perhaps if I may come back to the neighbourhood plan point later on chairman because I think there are some important considerations which I don't share Councillor Wellham's view over and it might be best to explain those down the line thank you chairman Thank you for that. And uh, thank you for um, everybody's patience. Um, we have questions for the ward members. Um, I think, Councillor Field, I think you've finished, haven't you? We're on to um, Councillor Gould. Yes, I had finished. Thank you. Councillor Gould. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And the uh, question uh, that I was going to ask uh, and the thought behind it, uh, uh, I been addressed really in what's been said so uh, I will be saying something about this when we come to de- to debate but I think that's the most appropriate part of the meeting thank you thank you um Chair, Councillor Haddingham Chair sorry it's Councillor Eben here can I ask if I find it very hard to hear Councillor Gould very clearly and I was wondering it sounds a bit like he's on a speakerphone and whether he can he's, he's to... actually in a, a big chamber, I think, and it's echoing round. So I don't yes, think... I just wonder if he can unless he his puts a bucket on his head. I don't think there's going to be much better. Or we'll relay if you if you struggle. Thank you, Councillor Haddingham. Um, no, I haven't got any questions now either. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hicks. Nothing to add. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Humphreys. Madam Chair, yes, please. Uh, just one question. Much has been said about the cycle routes between Stowe Market and Stowe Upland. Just for clarity, and I, I use that route a lot on my bicycle for fitness, and I see a lot of commuters using it as well. Um, could either of the ward members tell me how many accidents or incidents have been with cyclists, say, I don't know, over the last 10 years on that particular stretch, please? I think for that, Chair, it might be Sam would here. Be the better one. You'd have to ask Highways that. Yeah, to exactly. get that for, for, for the Okay. Can Highways jump in and answer the question? Yes. Um, any any observations on the cycle and, and accidents on that route? Yeah, if you just give me a moment, I'll just uh, look at the data. OK, we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, any other questions, Councillor Humphreys? No, thank you, Madam Chair. We'll, we'll get the answer to that shortly, as soon as Sam has it. Um, Councillor Mansell, do you have questions for the ward members? Uh, yes, please. Uh, I, I have. I'd like to go back to an earlier question that I asked, um, and I have one other question. Uh, first question was: Can you tell me what facilities open to the public are available at Walnut Tree Farm? Uh, that's my first question. Uh, yes, I can. Um, I, as you probably know, that there, there, there was a range of facilities there, including the post office. Uh, currently, uh, post COVID. There is a coffee shop um, which does uh, a range of food, um, not the wide range that it has done in the past. But uh, what will happen when we come completely out of lockdown, I don't know. But uh, the intention, uh, as I understand... No, no, it's what's open now, Councillor. Um, And Uh, so can I just confirm there is no longer a post office? 
There is no longer a post office. Right, thank you. Um, and my other question uh, maybe relates a bit to the other comments about cycling. Um, now, could either you or Councillor Eburn, uh, as possibly less frequent cyclists than myself, um, how confident would you be about cycling from this? Well, uh, hang on, proposed... that's not clarity. That's just a. No, a, I want to know if it is a view. feasible cycle route well, from this feasible, development. Would you feel comfortable no, on it? You well, yeah. Uh, no, sorry. Questions. All right. Is it a feasible cycle route from this development along Thorny Green Road to join the cycle path that is adjacent to the B115 um, further down to go over the bridge to the A14? Um, and that also is not, market. That is a question that I can answer because there is a lot of evidence of cyclists using the narrow footway to cycle from the Bloor Homes estate um, to Thorny Green um, because they feel unsafe on on the road. Um, that is that is a problem, uh, and the um, PCSOs have been out and had a look at that problem and have issued words of advice. I think can, can I, think I just interrupt there with you, Councillor Wellham? The um, cycle strategy that S Suffolk County Council have got involved, does that include all these sorts of things as well? Um, the, because I think we're, we're debating something that we shouldn't be debating. It's just a question, really. Does it, you know, do you feel safe, yes or no? I think the point is that we've, we've had to call the PCSOs out on, on several occasions using the um, referral forms well, that's to address the answer cycling. To questions because we're not in debate we're just in cl questions for clarity please and we are really winding into debate so can you ask a further question councillor mansell if there well, is no I, I don't think i've got an answer because uh, neither of the ward members have, have talked about thorny green road are you telling me that there are traffic incidents on thorny green road rather than the a road there are incidents on, th uh, uh, police have been called to incidents on Thorny Green Road, well, particularly where it becomes Gipping Road alongside the, 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 the side. Okay. Right, thank you. Councillor Matheson. I thought the uh, ward members were admirably clear, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mellon. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just a quick question on the new junction into the Bloor development, which I understand will take all the road traffic from this new development as well. Um, is there any problems already with the capacity of that junction uh, that you're aware of? Um, um, can I just stop you there? That's a question that uh, I think Sam should be answering, should it not? I think it's a question about, about how do residents use that junction? Um, um, and if I could answer that question, it is that there are some residents get frustrated waiting to turn right. And so they turn left out of that housing estate and they take the, con the, con the country lanes to get to Stone Market rather than using the main road. So they, 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 tr they travel on farm roads, uh, single track roads rather than the, uh, the A road because, because of the congestion turning right out. Uh, and that's with the law site not fully occupied. I, oh, to be fair, it's probably 70 percent occupied. Look, I'm sorry, we're into debate and we are not debating. These are questions for clarity, please. Not what happens or might, might happen. You know, we've got to get clarity now because we're debating. We've got to go forward. OK, so apologies, Councilor Chair. Alan, do you have any further proper questions for clarity? Uh, no further questions. Apologies, Chair. Thank you. It, it, it's, it's just everybody's doing it and you're, you're last in line. Sorry. Councillor Mayer. No questions, thank you. Councillor Norris. No questions, thank you. Councillor Stringer. Yeah, yes, Chair, just two, if I may. Uh, have, have you assessed uh, with your work with the neighbourhood plan, the adopted neighbourhood plan instrument, have you assessed the impact of approving this site would have on that neighbourhood, that current neighbourhood plan? Uh, and the second question uh was uh, have you have you have you can you confirm that there are dwellings sited opposite the filling station that are not shown on the plan of the potential crossing the the second one is probably the easier question uh 
Uh, to be honest, I didn't. I didn't look at that. It was so small on the screen. But when I when I saw a fuller scale drawing, there there are two. There are two dwellings. There are two new accesses onto the A1120 directly opposite the filling station, um, and so they may well have not been on the plan. Um, they are fairly recent, so they may well have not been on the plan. Um, but turning to the the, the, the neighbourhood plan and what the the parish councils and the community's views on um, on it might be. Um, well, a key element of the neighbourhood plan is protecting the northern fringe of Stow Upland, especially Thradstone's Meadow. If, if we go back, the neighbourhood plan was drafted by a team of volunteers and, and they were led by professionals um, and uh, it was submitted to the district council officers, a few minor changes, and it has since been adopted by by the uh, council and is part of the development plan. Um, the community should be able to expect that Mid Suffolk District Council respect the importance of the neighbourhood plan, which is key to the development of the village. Um, now, the landscape appraisal, the landscape appraisal is part of the neighbourhood plan, and it identified the uh, the application site and land to the northwest of it as important open land. That's the fields uh, away, away from the village from that site. Um, and, and the landscape um, architect said that they should remain so. Um, yes, well, um, can you be brief on this, please? Because this is questions for clarity, not to debate the entire neighbourhood plan. No, 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 I was asked, I was asked what, the, what the effect might be. Um, yeah, I mean... Well, well that's, that's supposition. Well, I was asked. We want clarity on questions right. of the issues that are now. Yeah, right. The what the what the par what the parish and the residents feel is that if permission were given for this, then there there'd be further housing to the north, and it would have to come. The traffic would come through the village. It's totally against the direction of growth of the neighbourhood plan and what the community expects. Also, they. They expect Thradstone's Meadow to remain safe and without any further development alongside it. So, I mean, in short, uh, I think I think it blows it blows the, the neighbourhood plan out of the water and Thank would indicate. You. I think you finished that answer to that question admirably. So, thank you for your comments. Councillor Stringer, do you have a further question for Clarence? Uh, yeah, th this one is a straight yes or no. Good. Uh, thank did, you. <laughs> Uh, did the, uh, the the parish council did it submit uh, a, a refreshed plan to the joint local plan draft that show a greater number of houses that were allocated in the neighbourhood plan? Um, well, only in respect of housing allocation. But yes, um, the parish council and I, on behalf of the parish council and behalf of the community, sub submitted. Uh, a revised housing allocation. That's fine. Right. That's all I want to know. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, Councillor Stringer, sorry. <laughs> Councillor Warboys, questions, please. And questions, if you would. Thank you. Uh, no further questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Right. So we're open to debate. So we'll go round. Um, sorry, Madam Chair. Oh, I beg your pardon. What? Yeah, Who? just to come back to Councillor Humphrey's uh, question. Yes, it was, indeed. Sorry. Yeah, um, at the moment, I'm still looking on the database um, rega um, regarding the accidents. There are a number of accidents, but unfortunately, I can't see if there's a cyclist in involved. There are about five or six accidents on the A um, A1120 in that area, but sadly, I can't see the details. But I'm carrying on looking. Right, thank you. Um, can I just remind members, I'm not using the hands up system. I'm going through A to Z now, open for debate, please. So if we can go quickly on uh, to the debate and if we can have Councillor Caston, please. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Um, so the um, previous application was um, refused. The um, I think this new application is an improved layout. The um, buffer protects the um, biodiversity in the meadow. Um, the the Bloor Homes development has actually got dwellings closer to the um, to the um, meadow than this development. It's a it's a good amenity 
to, for that transfer of Tradstone Meadow for one pound. Um, the crossing widening and the extended footpath are also an improvement, as will the cycle route be, and improvements to the A1120 and the B1115. The, um, the, it is w with the joint local plan, it's outside of the neighbourhood plan. I think it, we've got to have an important discussion on the weight that the neighbourhood plan carries in this instance. Um, this, this for me, I think is the key issue here. Um, I'll listen to debate and um, thank you very much. Um, well, actually, Councillor Caston, you've brought up a very good point and I think um, um, uh, Philip wants to comment regarding the neighbourhood plan, which I think would help us all a little. I, uh, let's hear what he has to say, please. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, it's, uh, it's always unfortunate when you have a neighbourhood plan which is in tension with um, what you have in the district. And, and I bear in mind that uh, as a district, we refused an earlier application. I think it was that was back in February from memory uh, that the earlier decision notice uh, went out. And that was a decision which was an overturn at committee uh, and members, uh, Councillor Field and others, I think, made particular reference to particular points around uh, provisions in, in uh, the, 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 the Stow Upland neighbourhood plan. Well, since that time, I mean, we have seen other things uh, uh, emerge as, as they have. A, uh, and and uh, as an officer point of view, I think we take the view that there is a tension here with the neighbourhood plan, and that's unfortunate, but we do need to take this in the context of the material considerations in the round. And we cannot simply, uh, uh, unfortunately, apply the neighbourhood plan and give effect to it where material considerations take us in that, that, uh, that, that other direction. Um, I, I believe uh, reference was made to uh, the NPPF and the presumption in favour of sustainable development not being engaged where you have a neighbourhood plan which is up to date. Uh, <clears throat> there is a presumption uh, at 11D, uh, there is a point in uh, the neighbourhood in the, the NPPF which uh, talks about uh, not following that presumption in favour of sustainable development where the adverse impact of allowing development uh, would be likely to significantly in, and dem demonstrably outweigh the benefits. Now, I think officer's point of view here is that actually there is, uh, in, in this revised application, there is not the adverse impact, which would mean that the presumption did not apply. Again, take you back to the, the, the housing uh, numbers that uh, underpin uh, the development that, that you have before you this morning, this afternoon. Uh, you've clearly got a difference in approach between what the neighbourhood plan actually allocated. And let's not deal with the speculation about what might be in the joint, joint local plan to any grand degree. We know that there are housing numbers which underpin pin the joint local plan and wherever that housing goes we have to as a district deal with the applications that are before us when when they are made and we have an opportunity to deal with housing here and now uh, and and that is part of this and we know that certainly in terms of the joint local plan there is uh, an allocation of uh, dwellings amongst various different settlements which uh, Vincent described in his presentation and if one were to follow that, you'd clearly have a considerable amount more growth in uh, Stowe Upland, which is at odds with the neighbourhood plan, and there's no doubt about that. But since uh, since that decision was taken, I think we have seen other de de decisions by the Secretary of State, which I do think bear upon this. And uh, I, I think it's important to note that uh, Gladman, amongst others, are perfectly well aware of these. We had a decision in, uh, in our fellow council at Baber in Long Melford back at, on the 1st of April unfortunate timing perhaps because in that instance there was work being done on the neighbourhood plan and there was a site came forward with, which I think was in tension with that. In that instance, uh, and Mr Stroud can comment on the particulars of that public inquiry because he gave evidence to it, uh, the Secretary of State concluded that there was uh, there was a need for, for housing in the locality and that that attracted significant weight. And that's not an isolated case. This Secretary of State has given very substantial weight to uh, that, that identified need for housing in other cases that we're aware of across the country. And to be honest, uh, I, I, my advice to committee is that if you do not give the need for new homes and the provision of homes against identified need, uh, if you do not give that significant weight, uh, there is a question as to whether or not that's a reasonable approach. I think clearly you've got to find considerable unacceptable harm in any given case uh, in order to outweigh that sort of uh, emphasis. And you know, this is a decision, as I say, which Gladman are perfectly well aware because they were the appellants in that instance. 
So uh, in terms of the neighbourhood plan, I think there is a question about whether that ad adequately meets the need that we have for the future, whether uh, whether actually there is an open question about that housing need and whether the benefits of this development, and there are uh, a number of benefits here over that which was previously refused, uh, now provide a balancing factor. And as Councillor Caston said, is it absolutely what committee is here to do, which is to look at weight and to attach weight to the various considerations. Uh, the, the neighbourhood plan, as it as it stands, uh, was quoted in the earlier uh, in the earlier refusal in relation to various different issues. Those have, to some de de degree, uh, been addressed. I think the question of connectivity, uh, and indeed perhaps the benefit of the crossing uh, to uh, the co-op. Uh, facility is a, is a matter which perhaps it's worth speaking to or asking Sam Harvey to talk to the, 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 the safety audit aspects of that, as I said earlier. But ultimately, the earlier law development was quite acceptable to a Secretary of State's inspector at that time. Uh, so uh, I think one has to be quite aware of that. So in essence, Chairman, yes, Councillor Caston is absolutely right. This is about weight. Uh, whether the development plan, including the made neighbourhood plan, serves the function it needs to, and we have a, a core strategy and, and uh, housing policies which are out of date for the purposes of the presumption in favour of sustainable development, our conclusion is that in this instance, the benefits, there is not the adverse impact which would lead us to conclude that uh, there is a, a uh, an effect on the neighbourhood plan which would lead us uh, to... Uh, uh, a, a refusal against the presumption. That said, I'm sure other members will have different views and this ultimately bears on weight. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, uh, in Councillor Guthrie, I've got my hand up because I want to ask a question on that point to well, Mr Isbell. Is that possible or do I ask questions when it comes to my turn? Can you wait until your turn, please? Yeah. I'm trying to, thank you very much. Okay. I, I, I wasn't, well, I was ignoring you, but I wasn't. Um, I was hoping to get to you quicker. Um, Councillor Field. Thank you, Chair. Yes, follow a long spiel from Mr. Isbell. Uh, I, I find certainly I provide great weight to the need for housing. And occasionally I've wondered why there is such resistance to these sites on this particular side of Stone Market. We're well aware that the, we rejected the Bloor site a long time ago and that was passed on appeal. Uh, this site is at the edge of the countryside, but there is a rather large and sprawling farm site, not very far, just one field away from it uh, to the north, I think. So I do wonder uh, whether this is not an appropriate site. I know before we rejected it, and I think I had some hand in that, and one was concerned about the comments of the the, the links to the, the to the main village and through the stone market, the footways being narrow, the cycle provision being distinctly limited, and concerns greatly about the crossing over to the, uh, the co-op. And in addition, to go on one more, Thradson's Meadow was closely overlooked by housing and I, when I read the papers, I was somewhat pleased to see all those issues seem to be uh, addressed. So that left me with one point, uh, paragraph 14 of the MPPF, talking about the adverse impact of allowing development that conflicts with the neighbourhood plan is likely to be significant. It sort of says the adverse impact of allowing development. It doesn't talk about the adverse impact of that development itself. It's physically adverse. And so it just says the problem of allowing development that conflicts with the neighbourhood plan. So I find that worries me considerably. We've pushed people into neighbourhood plans and we should take note of those neighbourhood plans. There clearly is the problem that neighbourhood plans tend to be tightly turned, drawn around existing developments or those that have had approval and provide very little scope for additional development. I'm not sure that's totally true in the Stone Market, in the Stone Upland case, as Councillor Wellham mentioned. So I certainly find there are some difficulties, and as usual, we say, oh, we'll listen to the rest of the debate. Um, particularly those difficulties have been greatly amplified by discussion of the 
uh, the pedestrian crossing. Uh, that sounds increasingly like a, a bit of fantasy. There are safety issues and it sounds awfully unlikely for that to go ahead. And I can't say I'm totally convinced that we could put a condition in, a Grampian condition that would prevent any development unless the position and, and capabilities of that crossing were agreed. So I am still in the sort of uh, minded to refuse state, but not yet made my mind up. OK. Thank you for your comments, Councillor. Um, and you've just raised an issue that maybe Sam could help us a little bit on the um, crossing issue. Could you sort of amplify a little bit more for us on that, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, basically, the, the report that um, the Parish Council had Suffolk Highways put forward, there were three positions considered near the co-op. Um, each position was considered in their own uh, location. We, but one of the things that they did say was that it's very difficult to put down where the best place is for a crossing until you have a pedestrian crossing survey. So the crossing point has to be really on the pedestrian desire line. If there is a signal controlled crossing opposite the, um, the co-op, then we would have to be talking to the accesses uh, to the co-op to see if we can change their accesses to allow us to put this crossing point in. There was a, an, an idea to have a crossing more to the west, closer to the junction with a B1115, uh, but this wouldn't necessarily be on the desire line. So there is enough visibility on the location that is put forward at the moment which is opposite the co-op, but there is some work that needs to be done before we can categorically say this is where it's going. I feel, as a designer myself, I've been in highways um, design for 30 years, there is a chance to be able to put some sort of crossing here, not a zebra because you can't put it on an A road without that volume of traffic, but you can put in either a toucan or a crossing, a, a puffin crossing. We also, this development, you could say that actually, if it didn't bring it forward, this crossing point, it wouldn't still be, it wouldn't be severe. It would, there, there is a nice thing to have for that development to be able to allow the pedestrians to get from the site to the co-op, but they don't need that crossing point to get to the schools, which in our, we feel, is the severe has gone. I hope that helps. Thank you for that. Um, right, I think that's that's informative. So we move on to Councillor Gould. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I, I hope uh, I'm audible to uh, Councillor Ebor and others, as you, as you say, I'm, speaking from inside I Town Hall, uh, any place I can get to with a decent uh, connection at the moment. Um, as has been said, we have to consider the application before us, uh, not what might happen in, in, in the future. Uh, the issue for me turns on this um, potential conflict with the, with the neighbourhood plan. Uh, but I'm not sure, uh, having read the report, listened to uh, the, the officers, particularly Mr. Isbell, and, uh, uh, and heard what's being said, that uh, that conflict is sufficient for, uh, to prevent us uh, approving this application. On the application itself, this is clearly greatly improved. Uh, on uh, on the previous one, and uh, I think there's a lot to commend it. In terms of the the issue with the neighbourhood plans, it's in terms of the the numbers provided for, and and the plan itself acknowledges that the there may be a need for uh, further development, uh, and clearly there is a substantial gulf between the numbers provided for in the plan 
uh, and those talked about in the emerging joint local plan. Now, whatever is allocated within that plan itself, uh, I think as Mr. Isbell spoke about the numbers that underpin that plan, and we, we all know we would think that those numbers are certainly aren't going to get any smaller. So there is a need to 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 accommodate those those numbers. I think if the provisions of the uh, MPPF uh, 2019, uh, which is given on set out on page 41 of the report, lay down the conditions for the um, presumption paragraph 11D to apply. One that the plan is less than two years old. Uh, Secondly, that the neighbourhood plan contains policies and allocations to meet the identified housing requirement. Uh, now, such is the gulf, as I say, between what's being looked at in terms of the joint local plan and what's provided for in the neighbourhood plan, that I would be surprised if that uh, need is met. Now, I'm, I'm thinking uh, by way of comparison with our experience of the neighbourhood plan here in I. Uh, and we've seen on the table that was put up that I was um, the emerging joint local plan talked about uh, an allocation of uh, 541, I think, for I. Well, actually, I's neighbourhood plan uh, provides for over uh, 700 uh, houses. So it exceeds the expected JLP by some 35%. Uh, it's been possible to do that because the site's uh, exist and there's been public support uh, throughout for that and that public support was uh, very much to the fore when uh, a, a public appeal at a public inquiry for uh, an, uh, an application for a site that wasn't in the plan uh, was rejected by, by the inspector. Uh, for all the very good highways, uh, heritage impact and environmental landscape impact, the one thing that actually uh, led to the refusal of the, of the appeal was the level of the allocation that the, uh, that the neighbourhood plan had made. So because the level of the allocation was right in terms of delivering numbers, actually all those other policies in the neighbourhood plan the neighbourhood plan intact uh, is able to be uh, is able to be implemented, um, and uh, you know that in people's minds reinforced the absolute need to get the numbers right in the plan. I, I find a lot to commend this uh, this application. Uh, I shall listen to what others say. Thank you. Thank you. That that was really helpful to listen uh, to the neighbourhood plan situation. Thank you for that. Um, Councillor Haddingham, would you like to comment on the application in our debate now, please? Um, thank you. And um, and I, like um, Councillor Caston and Councillor Gould, also find a lot to commend with this um, application. There are a lot of uh, benefits with this newer um, with this new one. And um, and and unfortunately, or I hate going against um, neighbourhood plans, but if they haven't allocated you know the right amount of numbers it's um it's not going to look good for them and um and we have to sort of give the you know like's been said that give the weight to what it's due and what is um in line with um our JLP and what is not so um i'm i'm sort of torn at the moment but anyway i'm going to listen to what everyone else has to say thank you thank you councillor Haddam. and councillor hicks you've been very patient thank you very much indeed i know you wanted to say something earlier thank you thank you um can i just um just ask well i'll, I'll run through my thoughts and then i'd like to ask uh, mr isbell some questions if i may so yes, um, sure. so clearly the neighborhood plan includes allocations that aren't sufficient to accommodate the housing need in our uh, draft jlp so that's been clearly spelt out uh, we know the site now, it's well defined, uh, it sits uh, within the newly expanded Stowe Upland or on the edge of it. Uh, it definitely has good connections uh, and I, I'm not uh, particularly concerned about the questions that others have raised about being sustainable or not. And it has uh, facilities uh, in the sense that to have that uh, new co-op which has expanded from when it was just a petrol, small petrol station many years ago has grown. So it's a great asset to the community to have that on your doorstep. Um, 
So all those I see, um, you know, as as positive reasons or reasons that we need to take on board towards supporting the application. Um, but I am still uh, worried about this crossing. So when I look on the recommendation on page uh, 115 of the papers about the Grampian condition, I've got a couple of questions. Um, can we... Uh, uh, ask to change the condition, or is it is it wholly wrong that actually no building starts at all until the crossing is installed? And the reason I ask that is we're already talking about it being dangerous in the area, uh, and we've already heard about there been uh, the local members said there have been concerns and you know there have been accidents and it is a dangerous area already. So could we condition that's actually built before even work starts? Or could we defer this until that is concluded with guarantee that it will be built out? Because that, to me, is really quite a critical thing. And I'm quite nervous about it being so up in the air. I know I know, uh, Sam has said with 30 years experience, she thinks it will be. But the thing is, we're basing it on a, on a, we think it will be. And I like to make decisions on it will be. Uh, and I'm just wondering if there's any way around that. So if Mr. Isbell could answer that. Uh, thank you for your questions, Councillor Hicks. I, I was on the same page myself about those very two questions. So um, if Mr Isbell could um, perhaps allude to something which might give comfort to members as we move forward in the debate. Uh, thank you, Chairman. So this is an outline application and we've talked about no occupation until a control crossing has been installed. Um, so uh, what may also be appropriate is to bring forward the scheme design of that so that that comes in uh, not later than the reserve matter so that this is all coming in uh, early on. To, to, um, to defer this uh, 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 until such time as you had the scheme on the table I think would probably be would, would would be something that will give Robert Jenrick, I think, probably quite a, a, a degree of difficulty. I think that would not be reasonable. And and then the question of whether you could not start building this until you had a, a, a crossing in place. Planning is supposed to deal with the harm. The harm, arguably, here that we're dealing with is the access to the crossing, or sorry, access to the co-op, uh, and the danger for occupants of the new development. Uh, and I think the reality is that occupation is that critical factor that gives rise to the harm that you need to meet. Now, at the moment, you have this set within uh, a planning condition. Uh, arguably, um, you could um, put this within the section 106 to uh, require the timetabling of this and its its delivery to be um, effectively unchallengeable for five years because that's the way uh, you can approach section 106. So at the moment, a grampian condition will do, will, will do the job, um, but it is open to the, the, the council to um, seek to impose a requirement and to timetable that within uh, uh, the, the, the planning obligation, the section 106. I think it would be I think it will probably be unreasonable to expect there to be no building because the building is the thing that will ultimately pay for this and we're we're dealing with uh, a, a, an applicant who will be selling this site on to others uh, that is their business model and i think there are those who are interested in it um i don't know if that helps councillor hicks sufficiently at this point well does it how how can i how can we as a committee or how can i when it comes to my vote make this a more solid and confirmed matter because councillor eburn uh, has raised the point and count and the council wellham as ward members yes. that this is up in the air and still unknown and and my worry is they build out the estate uh, and they still haven't got this sorted and then they come back to us and say sorry we can't do it so you know how can we get confidence that this will absolutely be built out so um, that's what i need i i think probably we are talking about putting this into the section 106 rather than leaving it as a condition. Chairman, may I come back to you on that question and, yeah, and put my put my cold tea towel over my head and think about that for a, a little you. bit and then revert, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. Um, Councillor Humphreys. Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, interesting debate, actually. Um, although this is a new proposal for outline permission, 
all the reasons for the refusal of that previous um, application, although not relevant really, they seem to have been addressed and arguably to a more than um, satisfactory level, in my opinion. Um, the developer has been cooperative in all of these matters and additional pledges of money to support the highway safety aspects I think must be welcomed and uh, will lead to safety improvements throughout, especially 115 Junction and the crossing, benefiting not just Stow Upland and its residents but the wider community um, that live around that area. Um, I have to thank Councillor Wellham uh, for his persistence really on the crossing, but I do share Councillor Hicks's um, concerns over that crossing and the viability of it. Will it happen? And I think uh, it's absolutely right to get more clarity on that uh, prior to, to this going forward. And I'll be interested to hear Mr Isbell's uh, come back on that. Uh, that Grampian condition, um, I think it works. It might give us enough, to be honest with you. And as uh, Mr Isbell said, unless people can move into the buildings, they're probably not going to sell them. Uh, but they have to be built to produce the money. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sort of a chicken and egg situation, really. So it's difficult. There is a need under our GLP, although it's emerging, for more housing. That's been clearly identified. That's pretty much agreed by the whole of Mid Suffolk District Council. And that's why we voted on our GLP. Um, so that is coming forward. Page 113 sort of um, sums a lot of this up, actually, and so did Mr Isbell's comments. When it talks about, um, let's get my glasses on, I'll, I won't read it all. Uh, it talks about uh, accepting that as par paragraph 111D uh, of the MPPF, the policies most important for determining the application are out of date, meaning the presumption in favour of sustainable development, which this is, is applicable and the decision should be made against the tilted balance. It then goes on about the tilted ba balance, but summarises there are no specific policies in the MPPF which direct for refusal. Rather, the application complies with the policies of the framework taken as a whole. And that's an important point, that actually it is in accordance with the MPPF and it is sustainable and I think it's a fairly good plan on the round. Um, mainly because the additional landscaping, I think, satisfies a lot of the problems. Uh, the natural and wide buffers, they've got to be welcomed. And the protection of the meadow, I think that's a really important addition. It's excellent. The highways improvements that have been talked about, they're beneficial to everybody. Um, yeah, it's all good, um, as far as I can see. Uh, and they're welcomed. And as far as I'm concerned, um, they're clear as day to sort of represent the, um, the considerations or the the upset and, uh, and the deliberations of the residents and the parish council previously when it was uh, when it's refused, even though it was a separate um, proposal. Um, I think all in all, the, the, the changes that have been put into this are, are refreshing. They should be welcomed and we should take them for what they are. There's been a lot of talk about cycle routes, about highway safety, a lot of distraction talk going on, actually. Um, but let's get to the root of this. The root is that actually we've got a proposal in front of us for outline planning permission and it satisfies pretty much all of the MPPF, even though some of the policies that uh, we were referring to before are out of date and it does have some conflict with the neighbourhood plan. Um, there is no real reason for refusal on this. Um, the 115, the B1115, we need to consider that as well. Um, this isn't part of the proposal. That's a road that joins Stowe Upland to Stowe Market. And all that is important that we get cycle routes and we make the road safe. Um, I couldn't see any evidence of any cycle accidents along that road. And again, I think it's a slight distraction from the proposal in front of us. Um, so therefore, as a user of that road regularly for cycling, I see no issue with it. It's pretty safe. Um, I've never had an issue, but I might be the only one. Who knows? Uh, the bus timings, um, we're in a new world. People don't do nine to five anymore. Sorry if you think we do, but we don't. Uh, we work all sorts of shifts. And also in this modern world, most people choose because they're allowed to choose cars. So the bus timings, there are buses. They're not to everybody's liking. The timings aren't to everybody's liking. But let's not get away from the main proposal of this uh, that's in front of us, which is about the development itself. It is sustainable and it's fine. Um, so in the, in the sort of round, and I will listen to the rest of the debate, um, I found nothing here. There are some slight concerns, but nothing major to say, look, stop. Um, so I'll listen to the rest of the debate and I'll make my mind up as we go along. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Humphreys. And I believe, Sam, I think you've got some details regarding any cycle accidents. Could you come back that Councillor Humphreys asked about that, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I've looked at the transport ass assessment for this application and the previous application and the uh, one that won an appeal, the Bloor site. 
all of them, the accidents show that it was from driver Hello, error mate. rather oh, than... Right, um, uh, let me just uh, take Sam off my head. <laughs> so with this Hello, timing, you... if we put it in... Hang on, Phil, we're over yeah. talking. <laughs> <laughs> we need <laughs> Sam to talk, so Phil, <laughs> switch off. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, um, it is showing that it's through all the accidents are through driver error rather than and does not mention cyclists. Thank I'm you, afraid, Sam. as I say, I Alan couldn't get Smith. into the data. Thank you. It's as I thought. Thank you. Thank you for your question on that, Councillor Humphreys. Councillor Mansell, can we have your views, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, uh, I share a lot of the um, things that other people have already said. Um, and I, and I do actually think the developer has made a pretty good attempt uh, to work with the planning department to try to mitigate the issues that uh, were involved in the refusal of the previous uh, application. Um, but I do, like others, um, have a bit of a trouble with this proposed pedestrian crossing, uh, as in within my ward, there was highways work that was needed uh, to enable uh, development. Um, which has caused no end of trouble uh, because it wasn't actually um, finalised before the um, building started. And I think they're now trying to sell the houses and it's still not really uh, dealt with. So I do have grave concerns about this uncertainty over the pedestrian crossing. Um, and I, I'm not quite sure what the answer is, but I, at the moment, unless we can have a lot more certainty, um, I, I can't at all be comfortable uh, with this application. Um, in terms of some of the other changes, which perhaps haven't been mentioned yet, now this this application site ha is a smaller area for development because we've got the increased buffer zones, and people have mentioned the housing density. But in actual fact, I, I think in increasing the housing density may not be a bad thing because it may mean that we get more smaller homes rather than huge four and five bedroomed executive homes. So that might actually be better if we have uh, more ha homes in a smaller area. Um, uh, my notes are a bit all over the place. Um, uh, and I also think that the protection for Threadstone's Meadow is a, is, a, is a great benefit because at the moment it has no protection whatsoever. Um, so if, if that can be a protected site within Stoupland, that is a, a very good thing. Um, uh, with regard to the £50,000 proposed to improve uh, the junction of the B treble one five and the A whatever it is, um, I think now in our post-COVID world, perhaps we need to reassess the priorities about what that money is spent on, because we should be encouraging more people to use sustainable modes of transport rather than make everything car centric. Um, and I, I, I and I, I do actually consider that this site is in a sustainable location. Personally, I think cycling across um, Thorny Green is a delightful road to cycle on. So I was quite surprised that the ward members said it was terrible and there were so many incidents they had to call out the police because little has been mentioned about the fact that there is going to be a cycle access out onto Gipping Road. And you can cycle across Thorny Green to join the bike path that then leads down into Stone Market. And it is 1.8 kilometres to the station. Uh, and it's actually downhill, uh, which is a good thing on your way to work. So I think it is a sustainable location. But uh, my, my biggest concerns are the, the pedestrian crossing and the conflict with the neighbourhood plan. Now, much has been said about the allocations in the neighbourhood plan. But let's not forget that at the time, Stow Upland... Uh, made their neighbourhood plan and it was adopted by Mid Suffolk, those housing numbers were acceptable. It's only subsequently in this draft neighbourhood plan, and there seems to be quite a lot of information that is not in the public domain about the way the way that that joint local plan is heading. Uh, and I and I so I, I I'm a bit concerned about these these uh, uh, behind doors discussions about which sites are going to be allocated and which sites aren't. Uh, because I think uh, if there are alternative sites which may be assessed to be better that are going to be in the joint local plan and this one isn't, then that that to me does put a bit of a different spin on it. Um, so I, I'm not quite sure which way to go because I do think that it's, just, it's sustainable. I think there is a viable cycle route to Stone Market Station, uh, but I have concerns about the certainty over the pedestrian crossing. 
uh, and the fact that it conflicts with the neighbourhood plan and what sort of message that is giving to the public. Why are, are people bothering to spend hours and hours and hours making a neighbourhood plan if it doesn't actually mean anything? So I, I, I'm struggling a bit. Right, thank you for that, Councillor Mansell. Um, before we move on, I think Mr Isbell can advise us a little further on gramping conditions that um, Councillor Hicks brought up. Thank you. Apologies, Chairman, had me mic on and then didn't have, didn't have me mic on, do apologise. So uh, what, what I'd suggest in the circumstances, Chairman, is uh, an amendment to uh, Clause E uh, of the Section 106 provisions on page 115, uh, leaving the existing provision in there, but adding in uh, some text which deals with this question about uh, delivery of the, um, the crossing. So um, what I'd suggest as a way of getting the timetabling of this right is to uh, include an obligation that says not later than the submission of the reserve matters a scheme to a standard which is capable of passing highway safety audit for the provision of a controlled crossing on the A1120 in the vicinity of the co-op should, should be submitted to the LPA in consultation with the local highway authority. So at the time you get the reserve matters or not later than that you get a scheme submitted which shows something which appears to be capable of passing safety audit. That's obviously a separate discretion to, to, to be exercised. Uh, then go on to say the scheme shall include measures and timetable for delivery of the crossing such that it is available for use prior to the first occupation of the development. Uh, and lastly, to say no development shall con commence until that scheme is approved. So effectively, you have the timing of a scheme which should be eligible to pass safety audit. Uh, it go then goes through that process uh, and include with that scheme uh, timetabling to deliver this uh, such that it links to the occupation of the development uh, and then ultimately no development starts until the scheme has been uh, approved uh, and therefore will be delivered. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and can I go back to Councillor Hicks because he was the one who brought this up and yeah, he didn't thank you. have the I think answer that's, within it. Yeah, I mean, for me, that, um, I mean, because there are multiple layers of what you've just said. So actually that gives me confidence now that this will be built out uh, at all, no matter what. So um, with that, I'm that takes away my biggest issue. So I'll be supporting the application. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for that. So um, we now move on uh, to uh, Councillor Matheson, please. Your views. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I did. Um, I was looking for quite a long time for, for something along the lines of what Mr. Isbell's just um, put forward with with the with the reserved matters, as, as an actual scheme that that's that is can be de well a design really a design that's capable of being a part past or has been gone through an audit really um is is good yes however and i think the the improved detail that's been offered this time doesn't um shouldn't take us away from the um the principle and you know this is an outline application we should be looking mainly at the principle and I, I think it's very disappointing to see such a huge effort um made to to actually overturn the neighborhood plan i think that's a misplaced effort and, and um it's disappointing and I, I think on some of the the assessment detail um really we, we're being pushed much too hard in one direction um the i think the point is we're supposed to make on balance decisions and to say that it would be unreasonable to to find uh, unacceptable harm where we did not do so in january um i don't i don't like that we we have repeatedly over the years been advised not to throw um the kitchen sink in when we're writing reasons for refusal so um we will be weighing more things to reach a decision, then we will put in a re reason for refusal if that is what happens in any case. So I think I think some of that some of that in the assessment, which, which lent rather strongly in, in the other direction, was not. I, I didn't like reading that. I'm afraid. So if we turn to the to the actual pr principal decision, the the difficulty, the conflict, the tension, that, as as Mr. Isbell has described it. Um, between the neighbourhood plan and the housing numbers. Now, we're told housing need, and I think that if you actually look a little bit at need, we find firstly that the need's been calculated using um, 
uh, methodology provided by the government, which has somehow uh, had us wanting to build more houses than the increased number of people that are going to be living in the district. And public common sense struggles with that, for sure. And so I think that's the numbers which are, in any case at the moment, not bolted down. They are housing evidence. I think it was established that they are published housing evidence towards an emerging joint local plan. So I don't think we should be taking that and, and kicking the neighbourhood plan out for that reason. And I think the the neighbourhood plan will be reviewed in time. The joint local plan will be adopted uh, and hopefully in the time scale we've just agreed council. So I would say what's the hurry and if we actually override the neighbourhood plan at the moment then really the harm, the harm of approving the application, the biggest harm is, is actually the damage to the neighbourhood plan process across the district not not just here but generally across the district there are all these parish councils and people are working on on them at the moment and what will they think when they when they see us overturning it it's, it's bad enough when when an inspector overturns it but when we overturn it ourselves without even um it going to appeal that's that's very very difficult for me to swallow and i, I really can't support this as it is Thank you for that, Councillor. We've been looking at your screen all the time, so I don't know where your microphone, your uh, camera has been. So, um, very interesting. Um, can we move on um, to uh, Councillor Mellon, if you would, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I hope I'm appearing on the screen. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll try and be brief. Um, there is much to commend this application in terms of what it delivers for the community. The uh, community ownership of the meadow, sounds good. The delivery of various sort of uh, infrastructure improvements in terms of the uh, crossing. Uh, my children, all three of them went to Stockland and you know ran the gauntlet of traffic to get across to get their lunch uh, at, the, at the petrol station. So. A crossing there is would be um, a fantastic thing, and I, I, I wholeheartedly endorse Councillor Hicks's uh, idea of bringing that forward in the process. Um, so, for me, the thing turns on the whole conflict with the neighbourhood plan, um, and that what the, the neighbourhood have expressed is that desire not to push the envelope of Stow Upland further out into the countryside. Um, and to sort of put a boundary on it there. Um, if there's a conflict, um, it's a numbers one about the fact that the numbers in the neighbourhood plan don't quite add up to what the, we think they should do at present to deliver what we at the Mid Suffolk want to deliver. But it seems to me fairly clear from what the ward members said that further sites will come forward to deliver those numbers in due course and those sites will be at the Stowe market end of Stowe Upland, uh, i.e., for me, the more sustainable end of the development, closer to Stowe Market, closer to the shops and, and those sort of things. This development would push more traffic onto Church Road. Um, and what I was seeking for when I talked to uh, Councillor William earlier was to understand um, not what the design is of the junction there, but what is the reality? And the reality is that that junction from the Bloor Homes site is already choked and people are turning left to go through the countryside because they can't turn right. Now, if we allow this one on, that adds further traffic onto that junction. It pushes Stow Upland further into the countryside when we should be pushing it back towards the town. So in my mind, this um, site is too far into the countryside. Uh, it, it's away from most of the facilities that people will need. I totally understand that people will choose to use a car, but that has consequences. It would be far better if we had development around the B115 
at the, the lower end of stop and closer to the A14. And I, I believe that's what will come forward in time. So I find it very difficult to support this application at the moment. Thank you for that. Um, we now move on to uh, Councillor Mayer, please. Thank you, Chair. The neighbourhood plan is, is, is the crux of this matter for me. Um, and I'm not going to drag it out, but I think this is not actually a new issue in that the strategic um, planning policy team highlighted uh, before the plan was adopted that start of a neighbourhood plan potentially has it not got enough for residential allocation. So it's a, not a new um, point of friction. For me personally, the balance, where do I see it? I think I find in favour of the draft joint local plan. Um, moving on, we talk about implementing and it respecting the neighbourhood plan. The meadow is, is very important. And I speak from experience in one of my villages where a farmer's field that for decades had been used by the community was ploughed up. It caused real consternation. So if the neighbourhood plan expresses a wish to control the meadow, then this application gives that. And we shouldn't underestimate the benefit to the community of the council controlling the meadow. The crossing, I think that is critical. But I do take issue with um, Mr Isabel. I don't think that crossing is needed once the houses are occupied. When we look at the number of school kids that are going to be crossing that road, I sit in my um, one of my rooms upstairs and I watch the trucks going through my little village to, uh, to Walsham, to a building site there. You know, that crossing is going to be needed to protect the people that are already living there, not just those that are going to move into the new, um, potentially the new site. So if possible, I'd agree with Councillor Hicks, we need to bring that forward. And given the investment that the um, developers will put into this site, I think it's not unreasonable to expect them to spend money up front to safeguard uh, the village people and put in that crossing as early as possible. But it does need to be protected. Without the crossing, I would be voting against this. But as it stands, and taking into account the neighbourhood plan, all aspects of that, I see a lot of benefits. Um, I see a lot of positives. And actually, I'd, I'd like to applaud the developers. So often, when we reject plans, the, the developers rush off, find themselves a very fancy legal team, and take it to appeal. Well, all credit to this, um, this bunch. They didn't. What did they do? They listened to the um, issues. They respected those and they developed a much better um, proposal. And so I, I, I think that it should go to them. But as it stands, I marginally, but I am happy to support um, and will be voting for this plan. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Councillor Muller. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not going to repeat what all my colleagues have said, but I do actually agree with much of what's been said today. I do think the crux of the matter, in my, in my personal opinion, is the actual crossing, and I'm satisfied with the uh, amendment that uh, Mr Isbell is, is recommending, and I am actually minded to support this application. That's all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Norris? Councillor Norris? Yes, you're there. Go for it. Oh, sorry. My system is very slow. I don't know whether I've moved. All right, we can hear you. You go for it. <laughs> well, we can't hear you now. What have you done? Where have you gone? Can you Can you put your mic on? It is difficult in this heat, isn't it? We can't hear you. No, can you unmute your mic, please? Councillor Norris. Councillor Norris. Uh, can, um, Rob, can you help Councillor Norris? Mike, we can't hear you. 
possibly. So I'll turn my other microphone on so the public can hear me as well. I think it might just be a bit of delay. So if we just wait. Can you know? There we are. We can hear yes, you now. Yes, go for it. Keep going. Thank you. Okay. No, there's a very much a delay. Um, yes, I find there are lots of positives about this revised uh, application. But um, without going over all of the points that have already been raised, um, a lot of the issues that I have have already been mentioned. Um, control crossing, yes, this is uh, somewhat now tempered by the amendment that uh, Philip Isbell has suggested. Uh, I'm pleased to see the possibility of improvements to the uh, 1120B-115 junction. Uh, I do have concerns regarding the conflict between the JLP and the local neighbourhood plan. And I'm also concerned about the issue that's been mentioned about the additional traffic on the Bloor Homes Junction. So I am rather undecided and I will listen to the rest of the debate. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Norris. Councillor Stringer. Thank you, Chair. Uh, th thank you for the uh, opportunity to speak. Uh, I actually find this one not that difficult, uh, and it comes from uh, sort of 20 odd years of experience of actually several planning applications in this precise area. So, uh, first of all, I share the frustrations of the village uh, ab about the safety and the traffic issues at this point, uh, and I think we owe it to this village to get this application right. And I firmly believe that the application we've got here at face value looks absolutely right and bang on. But it's only when you scratch under the surface, you realize actually this is a completely unsustainable development for many reasons. First of all, I want to tackle the issue about the cycle routes. All of the cycle routes I've been shown today are conditioned on another planning application, the approval of the sixth form center at Stow Upland High School. So those cycle routes are going to be happening if they haven't already happened anyway. Uh, can I also just go back to first principles? First principles in the MPPF, you do not use your most productive land for housing development. This land is grade two, the best grade in Mid Suffolk. So if you want to grow food in the future, please don't build on fields like these. I uh, also wanted to go over the history of some of this. I happened to be on the planning committee when we approved the two houses on the other side of the road with the two new driveways. The driveway is not shown in the plan of the proposed crossing. The problem with those are, if you put a central island in, the people can't turn left coming out of their homes. They just run over the island. And they also don't have enough time to see what the signals are doing and if there's anyone on the crossing. If you then start to move the crossing to the east, you start moving it up the hill towards the junction and it's too close to that junction. And one of the reasons we weren't able to condition such a crossing when we did the revamped petrol station and when we built the houses was because there was no safe scheme that had been audited by the county council. In fact, we were prevented in putting that condition on by the highways department because there was no safe scheme. And to date, there has been no drawing of any safe scheme in this area. So as far as I'm concerned, if you think you've cracked the, the, the crossing issue, uh, I think that's hugely wishful thinking. I will not approve anything until I see a proper audited plan of this. And the reason I say that is one of deliverability. We have similar schemes across Mid Suffolk. I've got a scheme just up here that the planning committee have approved twice and twice it's got to bring about some highways benefits. They can't do it safely and the houses have lapsed and they haven't been delivered. One of the major principles of the MPPF is the housing is deliverable. And if the crossing is not deliverable and you haven't seen a plan to show that it will, then the houses won't be delivered. You then approved an undeliverable site against the MPPF. Can I also just uh, tackle something about the neighbourhood plan? The primary document in looking at this planning application is under the MPPF, the made neighbourhood plan. It is the only plan that's gone through any inspection. The draft joint local plan has not been through any such inspection. So the raising of that as, well, the neighbourhood plan's got to meet a target in the JLP. Frankly, for me, that has not been tested by an inspector and should be, which is why I won't be supporting this, because what I think will happen if we approve this, we will deliver less houses in the future because the plans for Stow Upland 
uh, as as they put forward into the JLP, was to deliver houses on the other side of the village, closer to the town of Stone Market, which means they can deliver more houses there more sustainably and more safely. If we approve this one, they'll have to revisit those plans and put less houses in the more sustainable area. So I will be personally voting against this proposal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Councillor. Um, we now move on to Councillor Warboys, please. Okay, gosh. Right, um, I find myself echoing in some respect Councillor Mellon and Councillor Stringer's words. Um, first of all, I think there's a certain, I'm concerned that there's a linkage between the developing a feasible, safe crossing at the Cooperative Food and developing the junction on the B1115. And there's been substantial development already in Stoutman. Stoutman High School is now over a thousand students who, and I think Suffolk County Council and Highways have a duty of care to provide a safe crossing point to, to the to the co-op. It's a, a, it, it shouldn't, there shouldn't be that linkage between that and this development of 80 houses. Um, now, at present, Stoutland is uh, surrounded by green fields. It's uh, in, in the middle of the countryside. I think the joint local plan has identified the potential sites between Stoutland and Stow Market. So you're going to see a, a Stow Market, Stoutland conurbation, a sort of uh, suburban spread, if you like, of Stow Market. I think it's, I've looked through the, the, read through the neighbourhood plan, I think it's a very well produced document. Uh, it has, it is, they have been flexible. They have um, responded to the need for more housing. They Perhaps they haven't met this target of 752 houses, but they, they have moved a long way towards it. I think it, they have identified the importance of this northern fringe to Stow Upland. This is the settlement boundary. This is where the countryside begins. This is great to agricultural land. It is our best and most versatile land, as Councillor Stringer said. It is perfectly reasonable, to my mind, to say that this is a point beyond which there should be no large-scale development. Uh, this isn't just to the advantage of Stortland, but to anyone who travels through Suffolk. They need to be sort of clear that Suffolk is an agricultural country. Um, sorry, county. Um, so I, I, I think a huge amount of work has been put in by the developer and the officers. I think they have tried very, very hard to get the best deal possible uh, for Stockman out of this development. But I think the the way which it overrides the neighbourhood plan and the settlement boundary, I think that's a line beyond which I don't think I can go. So I, th I won't be voting in support of this application. Thank you for that, Councillor Warboys. Um, well, it now comes to my turn. And um, I've been listening to um, all the all the um, comments. Um, I'm not going to go over the whole thing again. Um, there are very many positives here. One thing I would like to consider um, to ask the um, uh, officer if we can ensure that the uh, planting, we're all talking about just the uh, highways issues really, um, but that the planting can be brought forward at the beginning should members be minded to approve it. Um, because I think that needs to be got in place and place services mention that too. Um, and I think we need to get that buffer in place. Um, I think with all the improvements, I'm content to vote in favour of it. So I think really that's me finished on my comments. Um, yes, Councillor Humphreys. Councillor Humphreys and Councillor Cassin. Councillor Humphreys first, please. 
Madam Chair, so, sorry, I've had problems with buttons, uh, pressing the microphone on. Um, would you be happy for a proposal at this stage, given the fact that you've just summarised? I, I think so, because everybody's had their time to speak. Um, and um, I think um, particularly with the uh, item that uh, Councillor Hicks brought up, which we did bring up at briefing and um, Philip has eloquently given us some confidence and comfort with that added in. Do you want to hear that again if you're about to make a proposal, I presume? Yeah, I've listened intently to the debate and um, there's been some excellent points, I think, raised by all the councillors and, uh, and the officers done really well to answer all those questions pretty quickly. And um, it's been very good, actually. So, so well done all. Um, it's been a difficult debate. Uh, we've all got different opinions, but I'm of the opinion that this de development is extremely sustainable and satisfies many of the reasons for the previous refusal, although it's a separate application, uh, and it satisfies them well. I agree with Councillor Mayer that um, the developers should be congratulated on this occasion for not running away and for actually coming back and going, do you know what? I've heard you. I've listened to you. Here's my here's my solutions and here's my mitigation. And I think they're, they're they're really good. It's very sympathetic. Uh, in my opinion, um, there are no planning reasons why this can be refused. Uh, I think it's abundantly clear from the from the document set, and um, therefore a proposal uh, proposed approval. Um, however, subject to the condition that was asked for by Councillor Hicks. And I think uh, Mr. Isbell spoke about, I'd like that read out again prior to going in. Absolutely. Further. And are you happy to add in that we could um, have the planting brought forward before, um, you know, to make it very early, which is what was in place services document. And that's something I think that would be a, a slight cramping condition as well. Are you happy to add that in? That would be something you could get going. Um, without yeah, I, see, I see no harm in doing that um, as long as everyone's in agreement. Um, well, that's you. Well, and, and, and also it's going to soften the blow when they're doing the development. So, yeah, I, I would add something in. But again, uh, Mr. Isbell, firstly, can you read out the um, the condition that you applied, yeah. which is um, what uh, Councillor Hicks spoke about, and also um, so consideration planting. of that planting? Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Humphreys. Councillor uh, Philip. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes. So um, what I'm suggesting is in addition to item E on page 115, highway improvement contribution. Uh, so the addition is not later than the submission of the reserve matters, a scheme to a standard which is capable of passing highway safety audit for the provision of a controlled crossing on the A1120 in the vicinity of the COP should be submitted to the LPA in consultation with the local highway authority. The scheme shall include measures and a timetable for the delivery of the crossing such that it is available for use prior to the first occupation of the development and no development shall commence until the scheme is approved. So that's E. Can I suggest uh, we have a landscaping condition, uh, a series of those which are talked about in the conditions, but you have an obligation which relates to landscape and open space maintenance and management arrangements being agreed. That's item G of your section 106. Bearing in mind you are interested in advanced planting, I would suggest that we would include G to include adv measures for advanced planting in accordance with place services advice, Chairman. So that's an amendment to G. So landscape and open space maintenance and management landscaping arrangements to be agreed to include measures for advanced planting as required by uh, place services. And Councillor Humphreys, are you happy with that? Yeah, Madam Chair, thank you. I think that, that covers it really well. Um, and do you know what? It's not a big ask, is it? So, yeah, I, I think that's that's a great addition. Yeah, and then I've got Councillor Caston had his hand up, please. Thank you very much. Yes, I'd like to um, I'd like to second that proposal, please. I'm very happy with the conditions. Um, I think we've had a really good debate on this one. I, um, I think it's time to go through to a vote and... Um, <laughs> see how councillors are feeling. Okay. Are we right. not allowed to come back and comment again after the motion has been yes. proposed? I haven't finished yet. I was going to go round again and ask for people to speak to the motion. Thank you, Councillor Mansell. I've got that on my list. So we go round again to talk to the motion. Thank you. Councillor Carson, do you want to say anything else? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to say, yeah, I'm, I, as you know, I'm for this proposal to approve this. Um, in front of me, I can see a um, set of scales with a, um, on one side, you've got the issues with the neighbourhood um, plan. Um, yes, these are important issues. But on the other hand, 
You've got the need for housing, which carries significant weight. We need these jobs more than ever at the moment. Um, we need modern houses built to um, good standards. We need those in an area with links and facilities. The houses, I like the size of them. I think it's really important for us to be building these houses that um, are in that are more affordable. Well, they're, they're easier ones for our young people to buy, not three, four bedroom houses um, that will be very expensive. Um, so, yeah, I, I won't go on too long because we've got a lot to get through. But, um, yeah, I'm. I very much approve of the this proposal okay. and the conditions attached to it. Thank you very much. Councillor Field. Uh, I quite like the conditions that um, Councillor Hicks proposed on the level crossing. Oh, on the level crossing. <laughs> <laughs> There's the, the crossing pelican or whatever. Um, but I still find the conflict with the uh, neighbourhood plan uh, really unacceptable. The allocations that the plan had in it, has in it, were the allocations appropriate when it was written. We've been told it will be revised. And uh, to, to me, I think that really rather swings the point. There are alternative um sustainable sites available in the village and there's every intention of bringing those forward so uh, i think i will be against thank you councillor gould uh nothing more for me i, I will uh, be supporting this proposal thank you um councillor haddingham um thank you um i just want to say that um when people have suggested that that there, there should be more um, development towards Stone Market, most villages want to have a, a sort of a clear buffer or demarcation between the town and the village. And so I think clearly then you build that towards the countryside, not towards the town, if you want a clear buffer rather than a sort of a, a conurbation or amalgamation between sort of Stowe Upland and Stone Market. So I think they're building in the well, like I say, the only other, if you, if you want some sort of buffer, is to go towards the countryside. So I'm veering towards um, um, supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Higgs? Nothing further to add. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mansell, you... Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just that it's just that Councillor Casson has said we're going to go to a vote. And I thought, oh, I, I want to say something else. Don't oh, worry. Um, Got my crib sheet here. I know I'm hot and bothered, but um, no, I, I I was just going to say that that I am a bit still a bit concerned about the words of the uh, amended uh, section 106 condition because I, if I've got it right, it was something about um, the scheme for the crossing, which appears to be capable of passing a safety audit. Uh, can we not have it that it's already passed a safety audit? Because I I, I am I do have concerns after what I've heard that it, no. it will not actually be possible to um well, to create I think what's this on the table is what's on yeah, the table. I know. So yeah. I, I, I'm not happy with that condition. It's not strong enough for me. And I listened to Councillor Caston saying that we that we need all these houses for all these people who don't exist. Um, but um, as Councillor Stringer pointed out, I think with this uncertainty over the uh, crossing, I'm not convinced that there is uh, viability uh, for this um a development to to come forward because if they can't deal with the crossing it may well be that we never have it and it may put other applications that are more preferred by the Stockland neighborhood plan into jeopardy if this is approved and is undeliverable so at the moment i'm sorry i can't be supporting this application thank you for your comments councillor matheson yeah, I don't think the public will be able to understand why if we've got somewhere around 8,000 planning permissions already approved uh, but not yet built, why we want to add add 1% more to that huge number. Well, I um, think, excuse that me, is a I simple think, problem. Councillor Matheson, I think you're banding a figure round that might not quite be accurate, so I think you need to pass caution on that. Well, it might be 7,900, we'll see no, soon. I think um, I think our planners will come up with something a little bit more realistic. Carry on, you were going to speak to the motion, but I think you need to be careful what your what figures you're busy that's, throwing out. That is 
that is all all i wish to say there is no hurry to approve even more right okay thank you for your comments councillor mallon no further comments from each thank you chair thank you for that councillor mayor no comments thank you thank you councillor muller no further comments chair thank you councillor norris uh, thank you. Yes, I uh, have still some reservations concerning the conflict with the neighbourhood plan. Uh, additional traffic at the Bloor Homes Junction, and I believe more work needs to be done on the potential highways issues, uh, including this uh, certainty regarding or otherwise re of this controlled crossing. Uh, so. I don't think I will be in a position to actually support so, this. Thank you. OK, thank you for your comments, Councillor Norris. Councillor Stringer. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, there, there was there was comment made about, uh, well, surely you, you want to build into the open countryside and not near the town you want to buffer. Well, actually, that's for the locals to, to decide. And they have decided and they've clearly put it in a plan. And we should not ignore that lightly. In fact, the government says we shouldn't ignore that lightly. Uh, th those ones that want to build, build, build are saying do not take their decisions lightly. You should give them the most weight within a development plan. And here we are merrily throwing it aside and we should not do that. Uh, we should also not lose our most productive agricultural land. We should not lose that lightly. And and actually uh, approving a, a development here, you're then only a couple of fields away from Gipping, the next village. So, so actually, you know, they've, they've chosen which one they want to be nearest to. They've said Stone Market. We're now saying Gipping. I think they should decide. So I, I personally think if you back this proposal, you're just putting another nail in the coffin of neighbourhood plans in Mid-Suffolk. I'll be voting against this proposal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that. Thank you. Councillor Warboys. Well, I agree wholeheartedly with Councillor Stringer. I think in this context, the neighbourhood plan carries enough weight to establish that this is the northernmost uh, settlement boundary. It's the limit of, of development for Stow Up. And they have, they have supported development towards Stow Market. They're, which is for the four, 443 houses uh, and on sustainability counts that would be far far better i think that i think we should respect the neighborhood plan and i think we should um, reject this proposal thank you for that councillor all boys so a proposal and a seconder robert carmichael can you go through and ask for people's votes please Chair. So I will now go to the vote and I will ask if you could please respond with for, against or abstain and myself and Mr Dupre will um, will confirm the vote after taking it. So Councillor James Carston. For. Councillor John Field. Against. Councillor Peter Gould. For. Councillor Cathy Guthrie. For. Councillor Lavinia Haddingham. Four. Councillor Matthew Hicks. Four. Councillor Barry Humphreys. Four. Councillor Sarah Mansell. Against. Councillor John Matheson. Against. Councillor Andrew Mellon. Against. Councillor Richard Mayer. Four. Councillor Dave Muller. Four. Councillor Mike Norris. Against. Councillor Andrew Stringer. Against. And Councillor Warboys. Against. So, Chair, and just to confirm, Mr. Dupre, I make that eight votes to seven in favour of the proposal. Passed. Um, Thank you very much indeed. Yes, I agree, eight votes to seven. Proposal. Thank you for that. So um, thank you to everybody for um, the lively debate on that. Um, can we just take, um, would members be happy with a 10 minute break or do they need slightly longer? I think 10 minutes because we've got quite a lot to get through and there are people waiting in the background for us. 10 minute break. I'm happy with 10 minutes. Thank you. 
Thank you for that, Councillor Norris. Let's go for 10 minutes. Robert, can you time us, please, and just bring us back in? Thank you.
Well, good afternoon again, and thank you very much for your patience. Um, for those who have just joined us, my name's Cathy Guthrie, and I'm the referrals chairman today. Um, we have had a long debate um, already, and uh, one application, and because of the time and the heat, but the most important thing is Sam, the highways um, expert from Suffolk County Council, can't remain with us that it's been decided that we will defer this matter. Robert, can you give any more information? Uh, Chairman, if I if I can help, yes, I mean, or Phil, um, yes, mm -hmm. um, yes. Sam Sam Harvey has another personal commitment, um, and she'll be leaving us shortly. My instinct, bearing in mind the subject matter of the the update on uh, the Thurston scheme, is that actually there's so much of it is going to bear on highways that actually you know that would deprive members of of the opportunity to investigate the issue properly. And I think to proceed without it, we would end up with another deferral anyway. Um, so my advice to you, Chairman, is that. We, we actually defer consideration of that item to a forward date because I don't think we're going to get through the issue once presentation is done. Yeah, well, I'm I'm more concerned about um, the the fact we haven't got highways with us. So um, somebody's just put something there. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, sorry, Councillor Guthrie, it's Harry Richardson here. Could I make it just a small comment off the back of that suggestion? Yes, you can. Mr. Isabel? Just yes. thank you, Chair. Just um, speaking as the ward member, I just want to say that I completely endorse what Mr. Isabel has just said. I think highways is obviously is a crucial part of, of the reason why this application was deferred initially back in January. So I think if we are to make a determination either way, um, I do think we need significant highways input to explain what's changed since then. So I think um, leaving the matter until we do have highways here is a, is a very sensible idea. Yeah, good. OK, thank you very much indeed. And so I think all that remains for me is to thank everybody who have everybody has put themselves out with various meetings being cancelled, holidays being amended, combine harvesters stopped, all sorts of things. And all of you that have um, entered into the debate today, thank you. And that's it. If you'd all like to now leave the meeting. Thank you very much. The meeting is closed. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, thank you, Madam Chairman. Chairman.